Uh, consider the following. So consider, just a little bit of notes, then we'll do a problem. So consider this DE. So we have a sub 2 of x, y double prime, plus a sub 1 of x, uh, y prime, plus a sub 0 of x, uh, y. So plus a sub 0 of x uh, times y. And suppose that this is equal to 0. So in this class, it'll always be equal uh, to 0. Okay, we're not going to have anything funky here. So this is a DE. And so what we're going to do is we're going to divide everything by a sub 2 of x to make the coefficient 1. So I'm going to rewrite this as y double prime plus a sub 1 of x over a sub 2 of x y prime. Uh, and then same thing over here, we'll divide by a sub 2 of x. So we have plus a sub 0 of x over a sub 2 of x uh, y, and that's equal to 0, equal to 0 equal to zero. Actually, going, going through all of this is actually harder than doing a problem. Um, the problems we're going to be doing are super easy. The first example we do is like, it's like cake. It's like, it takes 10 seconds. So we're here. So I'm going to call this something. I'm going to call this big P, and we'll call this big Q, right? We're, we're, leading, we're leading up to a definition. So we have y double prime plus big P of x, y prime, plus uh, big Q of x. It's fun to use Qs in math. We don't do that a lot. Uh, and that's equal to zero. So this is a DE. This is a DE. This is the DE we're going to be focusing on. So this, if you want, you can give this a name. You can say it's in a standard form. So standard, standard form, if you want. You can, you can say that. It's in standard form. All right, so there's something called uh, an ordinary point. We're going to define it. OK, well, we're going to define it. So uh, DEs have things called ordinary points and singular points. So a point, it's really a number, but I'm calling it a point. x equals x naught is an ordinary point. So it's called an ordinary point. So is an ordinary point if, so if uh, the following uh, is true. So if both P and Q are, and here's a word you've probably never seen before ever in your life, um, are analytic. So analytic at x naught. I could have skipped all of this and just shown you how to, done a, how to do a problem, but I figured this is the only time in your life you're taking DE, right? So might as well learn some extra stuff, right? Like just so you, so you learn, like so you really like learn, you know, some, some, some math. Uh, it was really it easier to avoid all of this and just do a problem, but it's good for you. So analytic, what does that mean? Well, it means something, even if you know what analytic is, you might not know what this means. This is actually real analytic. Real analytic. So this is not a very common thing. So a function is real analytic at a number if it has a power series. So basically, both P and Q have to have power series centered at x naught. So a real analytic function is a function that has a power series. So you could just say have power series, right? You could have just said that. Analytic by itself typically means something else. When you say a function is analytic, um, that has to do with functions of complex variables. A function that is analytic is a complex valued function that's differentiable. So analytic functions are functions that are differentiable, that you can find their derivatives, and they're, they're complex valued. That's what analytic functions are. So when I first started teaching this, teaching this class, I saw in the book, I said, analytic? I'm like, what are they talking about? I'm like, oh, real analytic, like, real analytic, real analytic. That's weird. Like, no one ever, I mean, it's, just, it's not as common as the regular analytic. So, Kind of random, right? Kind of random. So they both have power series. Okay, so how does this help us? Oh, 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 a point. Oh, let me just say it like this. If, 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 if x naught is not ordinary, so if x naught is not ordinary, it is singular. So it is singular, right? It is singular. So a point that is not ordinary is called a singular point. Singular point, kind of fun, right? Kind of fun. So analytic, real analytic means it has a power series, right? It has a power series. All right, so how does this help us? So a couple remarks and then we'll do a problem and you'll see how to do the problems. Hey, Spencer, all right. Good stuff. You missed some stuff, but it's okay. The, the, the one problem we did, there's actually a video of it on YouTube already, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's on the old test too, which I, which I will upload as well. It's worked out there as well. All right, so one, one. So if, 
So the reason I wrote this is because we're, we're going to need it now. So basically, to get from here to here, we divided by a sub 2, right? So basically, we can't divide by 0. So if this is equal to 0, then we have a problem. So if that's equal to 0, okay, so if that's equal to 0, uh, then we have a singular point. Then x0 is singular. Is singular. 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 So basically all we're going to be doing is taking whatever is here and setting it equal to zero and that's how we're going to find the singular points. It's super easy, right? It takes like five seconds. So if that's equal to zero, then you end up, to, in order to get this, you end up dividing by zero. So it's singular. Yeah? It should be x naught. Yeah, I know. The notation, I had to look at my notes. The notation is kind of funky. I know. That's why I have notes. <laughs> I'm not winging it. No. Yeah? That x0 is when we found the radius? Yeah, it's the same one. Here, I'll show you. Yeah, check it out. Say we had this. Look how easy it is. Watch this. Blah, whatever, right? So we have this, and we're looking for the singular points. All you do is you take this, and you set it equal to 0. So you would get x squared equals 4. Take the square root. What would you get? Two and negative two. Those are your singular points. That's it. We'll do it in a minute, but that's all this is saying. So basically, to, to find the singular points, you just take this and set it equal to zero. If it's not zero, it's an ordinary point. <coughs> so if it's not zero, then x naught is ordinary. I just went through all this just so you would understand why it's the case, right? So like dividing by zero causes a problem. That's why it's a singular point. That's why it doesn't have a power series, right? It's an issue. Right? We're only looking at power series around ordinary points. And the last remark is what we're going to use to do all the homework problems. Right? It's really simple. Uh, it's three. Three. Uh, if we have an ordinary point, so if x0 is ordinary, so if x0 is ordinary, we can find two power series solutions. Right? So if x0 is ordinary, we have, what is that? It's like flashing. No, what is that? It's really cool. Oh, fancy, cool. Yeah. yeah. They're not that good. Oh, that's really cool, though. I have some, but I don't know how to use them, so it's good. Oh, really? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if x naught is ordinary, you can find uh, two linearly independent solutions centered at x naught to that DE. So we can find two linearly independent solutions, two linearly independent solutions, so independent solutions uh, in the form of power series. So in the form of power series. So of power series centered at x0. So just, just theory stuff here. Okay, centered at x0. So in other words, we can, we can find a solution. And what we're concerned about is where the solution converges. Okay, so if you have an ordinary point, um, we can find two linearly independent solutions in the form of a power series centered at x naught that converge. Okay, that converge for four, or no, converge at least at least for this condition here. So this is something that we did when we talked about the convergence theorem. We had notation like this. We had x minus x naught absolute value less than r. So this is actually an interval, right? This is actually an interval, and r is uh, the radius. r was called the radius of convergence, right? <clears throat> what we're going to be doing in all of these homework questions is just finding r. That's all we have to do. And the problems, you'll see, you'll see how easy this is. You'll be like, oh my god, that's it? Why didn't we just do it? Because I wanted to give you some notes, right? So you have some stuff. Because maybe in three years you'll be taking like DE part two, right? And you have to look at your notes, right? So. The, the further you go in DE, the less DEs you actually solve. It's all about theory. Like it's, yeah. Yeah, my friend took a graduate level DE class and he said they didn't even solve DEs. I don't know if that's true. He's like, we just did theory. It was crazy. Like, yeah, he made it sound really scary. I don't know. He said his teacher kept saying, we have to control the terms. And he was really frightened and he barely passed. Okay, so, so that's all I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just he was like, oh, my teacher, I don't know what he was really lost, but he passed. <sighs> So here R, we're going to find R. R is the radius of convergence, but not only that, it's the minimum radius of convergence. So R is the minimum, 
minimum radius. Yeah, I've never taken a grad level DE class. Minimum radius of convergence. I avoided it. I just it was an elective. You ever, like, you ever like think, man, I could do that in my spare time, just take like one grad level class just for just for the hell of it? I could, but I'd rather like, I don't know, eat pizza and play League of Legends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah, I do a lot of math, right? Can do math all the time, right? So, so. I don't want to. I don't want to have any grades faster than I know. And honestly, Spencer, it's more, it's way more fun to give tests than to take them. So, <laughs> <laughs> so right? <laughs> like, it's way harder being a student than it is teaching. Let me tell you, it'll be over soon, though. A couple of years, right? You'll be done. So R. How do you find R? You're going to use this. I could have just written this down and we would have been done. It's the distance between. BT means between. So distance between. Distance between. Distance between. BT means between. Between the thinking ordinary point. So that's given in the problem. And the closest singular point. The closest singular point. I'm going to put this in a box. I thought about it. I thought about like skipping all of this. I'm just writing this down and be like, I'll just explain what this is and we'll just do a problem. But that's all we have to use. So it's the distance between your ordinary point and your closest singular point. Okay. So let's go ahead and do a problem. And we'll do like A, B, C, D, E in just a couple until you get it. As many as it takes uh, until you get it, right? Um, usually, this is like the first question on the test. It's the first question on the take-home test. It's to help you relax. It's like, hey, relax type question. Everyone gets it right usually, so don't mean hopefully. <sighs> so I'll just make up a DE. Let's see. Oh, I know, I know. X squared minus 9 minus 9 y double prime plus, I had bigger hands, I can erase better, uh, x y prime x squared y prime, make it look, look scary, right? I wouldn't want to solve this DE, it'd be really painful, plus y equals zero. So that's our DE. And the question is to find r, which, which so r is the minimum radius of convergence. I'll write it in words. Find the minimum radius of convergence. Find the minimum, minimum radius of convergence, so of convergence. about the given ordinary point. So about the given ordinary point. So about the given ordinary point. Let me pause here. And so I'll do part A. I'll, I'll make the ordinary point x equals, I don't know, um, 7. So I'll pause here and let you catch up. So find the minimum radius of convergence about the given, uh, about the given ordinary point, right? About the given ordinary point. Yeah, it's good. So we've got a couple more days, right? I'll just talk what you write. We've got, we've got Wednesday, then we've got Monday. And do we have a review day for the fourth test? Anyone know? We have what? When's your fourth test? What day? Is it, is it, is it in December? Uh, I have this schedule. Is it a Monday or a Wednesday? Review 12 4 is the final. Uh, mm -hmm. Monday. Yeah. Wow, okay, so it's the Monday after Thanksgiving. Don't right, so it's just the Monday after Thanksgiving. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Monday, Thanksgiving, nothing. So yeah. we could have we could have like a review that we just take on. Yeah. So we've got two days basically after today. That's not bad. Yeah. Six point two all that time. Is our final is nuts, yeah? Is our final the second week in December? Yeah, final is the last day of the semester. The second yeah, it's the last day. I'll post I'm gonna post the review for final tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm, so you have it, like review questions. Mm -hmm, it's far away. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do this problem. Solution. Solution. Um, so it's good. We still got two days of this, which is really, really good because we'll be able to do more problems, right? Like it's really important. Okay. So this is the ordinary point. This is all of this is the question, right? So they give us the DE. They give us the ordinary point. So step one, we have to find the singular points. So all we do is we take this and set it equal to zero. Okay. So x squared minus nine equals zero. Step one. So we just have to solve this. So we could factor or we could live dangerously and add the nine. Let's live on the edge. So let's add nine. You might say, why is this living dangerously? Because sometimes when you do this, people forget to put the, um, what goes here? 
plus or minus, yeah. So these are the singular points. These are your singular points. Now you could probably do this problem in your head. Um, I don't like that. I like drawing pictures because it's fun. You get to like draw a little picture. Like it's always fun when you can draw a picture and figure out the math problem. So let's draw a picture. So to figure out your singular points, uh, you figure out your R, your radius of convergence, which is R, uh, draw a picture and plot your singular points. So your singular points were um, 3 and negative 3. So 1, 2, 3, that's the singular point. 1, 2, 3, that's the singular point. These are the bad points, right? These are bad, right? Bad, singular points, okay? So now we have to find R. Well, R is the distance from the ordinary point to the closest singular point. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw the ordinary point here on the graph. So the ordinary point is over here, it's, it'll be seven. And this is three, and this is negative three. So this is the ordinary point. So R is the distance from the ordinary point to the closest singular point. Which one is closer, negative three or three? Three. Three. So what would the distance be in this case? What would R be? Four, right, it's just four. Everyone see it? It's four. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I mean, how do you get from three to seven? It's just four, right? Like, it's just four. That's it. That's it. That's it. Any questions? That's it. It's really easy. I could have just shown you that and skipped all that, but I don't know, I just, here's another one, B, here, B. X equals negative eight. X equals negative eight. See if you can do this one. See if you can find um, R on your own. Try to do it. Like, take, take, take a minute and see if you can find R in this problem. Yes, it is. It's that easy. I know. I know. It's that easy. I know. It's five, right? It's five. Do you see why it's five? No? Try to do it. Then draw like a picture. Plot your singular points. Plot your ordinary point and see if you can find it. So that's the ordinary point. I'll just do it. Check it out. So here's negative three. Here's three. Oh, so negative eight is over here. So the distance between your ordinary point and your closest singular point is five. So we were using the exact same graph? Yeah, we're using the same problem. It's just part B. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One more. Two more. C. X minus eight is your X naught, right? Uh, yeah. X minus, yeah, X, X naught is negative eight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. X naught would be negative eight. That's the ordinary point. That's your ordinary point, yeah. About the given ordinary point. So this is the ordinary point, and you're just finding the distance from the ordinary point to the closest singular point. Let's just be silly. What if it was zero? So if it's zero, you have a tie, right? But who cares, right? So if it's zero, it's three both ways, yeah. Because here's three, here's negative three. Good, so it's, th so it's just three. Good, Spencer, so it's just three. It's just three, it's just three. What if it was a complex number, though? So let's talk about that, because um, you, know, you should learn stuff. Because uh, this is pretty easy, right? So what if it was, um, let's say it was, uh, what if it was two plus three i? What if it was that, right? What if it was two plus three i? So how would you do this? Well, before we do this, I have to show you some stuff that you've probably never seen before. Um, if you have a complex number, so I'll do it up here, so a side. So if you have a complex number and you write it, this is not in the book, but the book just assumes you know it for some reason. So if you have a complex number, say z, a complex number can be written um, as a plus bi, right? Every complex number can be written that way, right? You can also think of it as an ordered pair. You can think of it as a comma b, like this. Okay, so you can think of all complex numbers as ordered pairs or as a plus bi. So what am I going to show you? Well, there's something called the modulus of a complex number. So if this is our complex number, a plus bi, and you draw a vector that has a terminal point at that complex number, right, again, the complex number can be thought of as a comma b, then the modulus of z, it looks like the absolute value symbol, but it's not. Okay, it's something new, it's called modulus. And what is it? Well, you can use the theorem of Pythagoras. It's the square root of a squared plus b squared. This is called the modulus of a complex number. Okay. So the modulus function, you can think of it as a distance function, right? It gives you the distance between the complex number and the origin. So if you have two complex numbers and you're trying to find the distance between them, you just subtract them and then just put those bars there. So in this case here, let's do it. We first plot our singular points. So three and negative three. So here's three, 
and then here's negative 3. And then we have to plot our complex number. So you want to think of it as an ordered pair. So 2 comma 3, right? So you go right 2 and up 3. 1, 2, 3. So there's our complex number. That's 2 plus 3i. 2 plus 3i or 2 comma 3, whichever you prefer. So which one is going to be closer in this case to the complex number? Uh, 3 or negative 3? Three, yeah. Just by looking at the picture, it's not really drawn perfectly, but you can see that three is the closer complex number, right? So we have to find this distance here. That's going to be our r. So to find r, all you do is you subtract them and then take the modulus. So let's do it. So we have modulus, two plus three i, minus three. It doesn't matter which one you put first, okay? You can put the three first, but it's important, if you put the three first, you have to have parentheses around the two plus three i. That's why I put the two plus three i first. So you just subtract them, and then you just do the math inside the modulus, right? So two minus three is negative one, so we get modulus negative one plus three i, okay? And then now we take the square roots, so it'll be square root, we use the formula for the modulus, right? So it always reduces to just two things, a plus bi. So you can always use this formula for the modulus. So a here is negative one. So when you square that, it'll be negative one squared plus, and then three squared, three squared. So you get negative one squared, which is one. So you get one plus nine, uh, which is 10. And that's it, that would be your r. That would be your minimum radius of convergence, right? That would be the r. So all you do is you plot your singular points, you plot your complex number, think of it as an ordered pair, right? Two comma three, and then just like look at the picture, say, oh, this one's closer, then you subtract, and then you just use the modulus formula, right? That's your a, so r is root 10. So r is root 10. That's it. Mm -hmm. And this is in the book, which is kind of interesting, right? I'm like, well, why is it in the book? Like, this is DE, right? Like, they, where do you learn this? You don't learn this in any class up until now, right? I mean, did anyone know this already? Anyone? Yeah, this is new. It's crazy. It's an example in the book, yeah. The example in the book is worse. It requires that you use the quadratic formula to solve this equation, but I didn't want to do that because it's more work, so. Yeah, I know. I was like, no. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Uh, we should do another one. Let's do another one just to make sure you got it. E. Here we go. E. So here's, here's another complex number. Uh, oh, I know, I know. Negative 4 plus 6i. See if you can do it this time. See if you can do it. So, so solution. So step one, we draw the little, you know, picture. So here's 3. Here's negative 3. Okay, those are our singular points. So now we have to plot our ordinary point, which is negative four plus six i. It doesn't have to be perfect, so it's like somewhere over here. It's like negative four, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, so like over here. So this is negative four plus six i. Right, that's how you plot a complex number. Negative four plus six i. So obviously, uh, negative three is closer in this case. Right, it's supposed to be a straight line. So all you have to do now is find the distance. So you find the modulus, a little bit bigger so you can see. So it's negative four plus six i. Negative 4 plus 6i. Oh, but it's minus negative 3. So I'll show the extra step so you see it. Minus negative 3. Anyone mess up on that part? You did? Okay. So I'm glad I showed it. So this is negative 4. You can take a whole class on this stuff, on the complex num number stuff. You can take it after this class, I think. It's uh, offered at other schools. Uh, 6i plus 3. Mm -hmm. Plus 3. This? Oh, the formula. So basically, yeah, I didn't tell you. I guess I said it, but I never wrote it. If you have two complex numbers, you just subtract them and take the modulus. So like if you have like 3 plus 2i and negative 2 minus i, and you want to find the distance, you just do this. 3 plus 2i, and then you subtract them. Okay, thank you, David. Yeah, good, good question. Yeah, so to find the distance between two complex numbers is a really good question. You just subtract, and that gives you the distance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good question. Good. So then this will be uh, negative 1 plus 6i. Right? And then, so this is equal to the square root. Square root. You square the negative 1. You square the uh, 6. So we get square root of 37. And that's it. That would be 
your R. That would be your, your minimum radius of <coughs> convergence. Minimum radius of convergence. Any questions on that one? Any questions? It's pretty easy once you know how to do it, right? So, so given two complex numbers to find the distance, um, you just subtract them and take the modulus. The modulus. It's a, it's a fun word, right? It's spelled like this, by the way. It's modulus. It's fun to use words like that. Modulus. Sounds really fancy, right? Modulus. Any questions on this stuff? We have like eight minutes. So I'm not sure what to do. Like, I think, I don't know if we can do a DE in eight minutes. So we'll start the same way we did last time. We'll start by making uh, a substitution. We'll start by letting y be equal to a power series. So solution. So we always start with y equals. And it's always equal to an infinite sum, okay? Infinite sum. And you always start at zero. I tend to use n, but you can use any letter you like. So I'll use n again. So n equals zero to infinity. Then we have c sub n, x to the n. So all we start with that, hey, all right, anyone, good. So all we start with that, right, every single time, okay? So it looks like in this case we have the second derivative. So we'll have to take the derivative two times, not just one time, okay? So we'll take the derivative once, so y prime. We talked about this last time. Do you remember what happens when you take the derivative? Where do you start at in this case? n equals 1. Yeah, n equals 1. You shift it up. Good. Yeah, it's a bit easier to see from there, right? Yeah. Yeah, good. To infinity. All right. Yeah, joining the... Good. And then so this is c sub n. The c sub n is a constant, so it hangs out. So you put the n in the front, so you get n x to the n minus 1. So you always just shift it up when you take the derivative. Is everyone okay with why we do that? With why we shift it up? Any questions? Let me explain it anyways. The reason we shift it up is because if you were to plug in zero here, hey, all right, if you plug in zero here, you get c0 x to the zero. <coughs> if you plug in one here, you get c1 x to the one, etc. So this is c0, right? So it's a constant, right? This is just c0 plus c1 x plus dot, dot, dot. So when you take the derivative of this, the derivative of the constant goes away because it's zero. So c sub zero corresponds to the zeroth term, so it goes away, so you have to start at one. Okay, that's the idea. That's why you have to shift up when you take the derivative, okay? And then we have to take the derivative again. We have to do it twice because there's a second derivative here, right? So let's do it. So we have y double prime. So we're taking the derivative of this this time. So this hangs out. So we have infinite sum. And equals, where do you think we start at this time? What do you think? Two. Which one? Two. Two. Yeah, you got to shift up again, right? And you can convince yourself because if you plug in one, you get one minus one, so you do get x to the zero. So you start at two. This is a constant, so it hangs out. So we have c sub n. The n minus one, I'm going to put it here, so it'll be n, n minus one. So n, n minus one, x, and then you subtract one, so it'll be um, n minus um, two. I think I did that right. Yeah, n minus two. Mm -hmm. Is it still an infinite sum of the power? It's still an infinite sum, yes, thank you. Infinite sum, good. So that's where we are. So you just start off by taking the derivatives, always, okay, always. At least, were you here at the beginning last time or no? I don't think, okay, perfect. Were you here at all last time? Uh, don't worry about it, who cares? You'll be, you'll be okay, you'll be all right. This is better, okay, this is, this is really important for the test and for the final, okay, for the final. I think this is one of the review questions for your final. If you look at the review questions, uh, it says to do this one from, this is on the old test. What's it say? What? What is it? On test and final. Yeah, it's totally worth it. It's a nice problem because you can actually finish it within like a regular time frame, like in a classroom. And it's beautiful. Wait till you see that. Oh, this is so nice. Okay, so now we take everything here and we plug it into the DE, right? So we're going to plug everything into the differential equation. So we have y double prime. So I'm going to write that. That's over there. So I'm going to put it here. So we have infinite sum as n runs from 2 to infinity. Then we have c sub n, n, n minus 1, x to the n minus 2. And plus. So all we've done so far is just put the y double prime in here for this. Then we have the plus, and then we have the y. And I'll pause here and let you catch up. I know when you're copying notes and writing this down, it's a lot of notation, right? The summation symbols, the infinities. Uh, it's a lot to write. Hey, Gibson, all right. So c sub n, x to the n, and that's equal to zero. Yeah, it takes time. I like series probably because I didn't learn this in school, right? I, I, when, when I, I think I told you before, but uh, when I learned this, we had hurricanes, so we just didn't even have class. So it was perfect, because I got to stay home. Um, but then I had to teach myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, 
So any questions on any of the steps? So yes, Rachel. Yes, correct. Yes, that's going to happen on the take home and in the next example. Like if you had an X here, very good question. You would have an X here. Hey, Ian. Whoops, whoops, game over. I failed. Uh, you would have an X here, right? And then you would distribute the X. You would get X to the N plus 1 because you would add the exponents. Yeah, very good, Rachel. Rachel's saying, what if you had an X there, right? That happens on the take home, right? And on your regular test, too. We'll do one like that later. This one's rigged uh, to, be, to be easy. So will you do one where it, let's say it's like the fourth, Y to the fourth? Will we do, will we do one like that? Like, will we show just so I can see the pattern? Yeah, so if you took the derivative again? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So you do Y triple prime, so it'd be N equals 3. Okay. And then you have C sub N, yeah. and then these hang out, and then you bring this one down, right? Okay. So it'd be N minus 2, and then you subtract one, so it'd be N, N minus three. 3. Yep. Okay, so then if it was 4, it would be all that times N minus 3, and then it'd be N minus negative 4, and you'd have to change where you started from. Right. Mm -hmm. It ends up being a factorial if you keep going, because notice it's n, n minus 1, n minus 2. It's kind of kind of cool, random, but cool. So, yeah. Yep. All right. So now we're here. So now we have to do some stuff. So the next thing is to do that thing with the k's. I don't know if you remember that from last time. So we, we call this k, right? So you call this k. So k equals. You could do this in your head. Uh, I, I usually don't do that. I'm not a fan of that, because it involves too much thinking. Um, so I like to show the work. So call it k and solve for n every time. So if we solve this for n, we end up adding 2 to both sides. So we get n equals uh, k plus 2, I believe, right? So n equals k plus 2. Do you always start with the biggest power? Well, no, you just always call this k in this, in this step. So you just go do one by one. Mm -hmm. No, good question. This is true for all the e's in the previous section and all the e's in the take home and in this section as well. So you, I'll show you when the steps start to deviate. So for every infinite sum, you take k equals the... Whatever is there, the exponent. Yeah, every always. Single one. Every single one, right? And then you solve, so you add two. So always do this. We'll come back to it now. And this is going to seem completely psychotic and crazy, but it's okay. It's okay to be weird sometimes. Okay. That's right, totally psycho. K is n, so n is k. Yeah, n is k. And yeah, arbitrarily <laughs> calling it a K, and that's just what people have decided, right? Yeah, yeah. You can use J or I, but I don't like J's and I's because J and I can look very similar if you don't put tails on them, right? So, so. I have J. Uh, yeah, you can do I hat J hat. Yeah, yeah some some vectors. Uh, all right, good stuff. Good stuff. I'm gonna do this like this, just like to separate our thoughts, and so I'll, I'll continue over here. So we have to rewrite this one. So let's rewrite it. So we have infinite sum, infinite sum. K, right? All the n's become k's. We're replacing everything. So this is a part that someone in my other class had a really hard time with. So we have to figure out what goes here. Does anyone know? Plus 5. Nope. Well, you have n equals 2, you plug 2 in for uh, k. Right, for n, and then you get okay, 2 minus 2, so you get 0. zero. Very good. Everyone see how we did that? So to figure out each one, you just take this number and you plug it in there, right? So I'll even show the work so you see it. K equals 2, two minus. This is a really important skill. This is called shifting the index of summation. I see what I did. I What'd you do? One, and then I did it from that. Oh. <laughs> yeah, if you ever uh, study computer science or discrete math, stuff like that, this does come up again, right? So it's good to know how to shift the index, right? And a lot of mathematical proofs, you have to shift the index. This is how you do it, right? You call it K, solve for the other one. So K equals 0 to infinity. And then all of the n's are going to be k plus 2's. So all we do now is we go through and put a k plus 2 here, a k plus 2 here. k plus 2 minus 1 is k plus 1, and then that's just going to be k. Yeah, so c sub k plus 2, uh, k plus 2. All right, replacing all of the n's with k plus 2's. Uh, n uh, is k plus 2, so it's n minus 1. So it's k plus 2 minus 1, so that's... Um, k plus 1, and this will be x to the 0. Almost, no, to the what? What's n minus 2? n minus 2 is just k, and that was the whole point. I always think that, that that's the whole point. The whole reason we did this was to make this a k. <coughs> right, so you make this a k, solve for n, and then carefully replace everything. So. And then the other thing we have to do is make sure they start the same place. <laughs> right, at some point, right. Mm -hmm. k, k to the 0, right? Hmm? K to the zero. K. K. What do you mean? <laughs> so K is n minus two, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So then when you plug in 2 for n, you get 0. Equals 0. And that's why we start here. Yes, but then whenever you get up. Oh, oh you do it here. No. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. It builds character. No, someone in my other class asked the same thing. So this is tough. And this is equal to zero. No, it's good. Ask, ask. Mm -hmm. My other class has their test tonight. Fun times. And that sucks. Mm -hmm. Theirs is the same as yours, except it has like one extra question. So they have an extra hour, though. So it's not fair. So, well, it's an extra hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any questions up to here on this one? Any questions? <laughs> Okay, now, it's what, it's what Patrick said, we have to make sure that they start at the same number, and they both do, right? They both do start at the same, so we just combine them. If they don't, we do some other stuff. Like if this was a one, then you would plug in zero here, and then start this at one and combine them, right? We talked about that like last week. We'll do it again today after this example. So now we can combine them, so we have infinite sum. K runs from zero to infinity. Oh, you weren't here last time, Patrick, right? You saw, oh, neither were you. Oh, so look at we're doing this. Okay, so now we're going to combine them and factor out the x to the k. So I'm going to put a bracket here. So if c sub k plus 2, k plus 2, k plus 1, plus c sub k, bracket, and then we have uh, x to the k. And that's equal to 0. So we're here. So we are here. This one's actually, this one's actually not, that, not that bad. Uh, it's specially picked though, like, if I put a minus sign here, it doesn't become so easy. It actually changes the problem. Uh, oh, I should mention this. On, on exam, I would say to write your answer in terms of familiar functions. Uh, all your questions will say that. In other words, your final answer should involve like E, sine, cosine, or some polynomial. So you'll, you'll see how that happens. How does the negative become set You just have a negative instead of a positive. I know, right? I'm pretty sure the negative becomes difficult because one semester I'm like, oh, I should do a different example for my class. I always do the same one. So I put a minus sign here and I tried to do it and I'm pretty sure I couldn't get the, like it was hard. Be because what happens is, remember, just inside, I'll explain why. It's, it's actually a really good question. So you get two answers, y1 and y2, right, because it's order two. And the final answer is a linear combination of those, right? But be because the final answer is a linear combination of those, like your y1 and y2 can be slightly different. So like I think what I had to do when, when I did that problem, I think it was that one, is I had to like add up the answers and divide by two and stuff, like in order to see the pattern. Like it was really tricky. Oh, okay. Yeah, like so you would you get down to the end and to you're just summing them up to find that pattern is where it's tricky. Yes. Yes, exactly. So when you get to the end of the problem and you're looking for the pattern, it's completely ridiculous. That's why I think this is like a last resort method. That's a good good yes, exactly. Exactly. This is probably one of the easiest ones. Okay, so now this is equal to zero, right? So this is equal to zero. You can think of this as a polynomial. This is zero plus zero x plus zero x squared plus dot, dot, dot. So if this is equal to zero and this is true for all x, that means that all of these must be equal to zero. So in this next step, you just take all of this and set it equal to zero. So we have c sub k plus two, k plus two, k plus one, uh, plus ck is equal to zero, okay? And this is, this part's really important. So you just take all of that and set it equal to zero. And it's important to specify where you're starting. You're gonna need this, especially in the harder problems, and in every problem. So for k equals zero, mm -hmm. This, okay, let me write it like this. This is, this is c sub k plus two. There we go, there we go. Make it a little bit smaller. And then k plus two, k plus one, Plus, I'll write, I'll write a little bit bigger, c sub k equal to zero. What extra k? No, the x to the k at the end there. Oh, you drop it. You drop, oh, I thought I messed up. I'm like, oh no. Yeah, yeah. One way to think about it is if you divide by x to the k yeah. on both sides, you get zero. Sure, you can think of it like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, so this is true for k equals zero, one, two, et cetera. Hey, Spencer. So this part's really important, okay? This, you have to specify this. Why don't we leave that summation on the left side of it? We're trying to find a pattern for CK, so we want to eliminate the summation. That's the goal. Because once, once we find CK, look, we can plug it back in and we're done. Mm -hmm. I guess that's true. Mm -hmm. 
This, is, this has a name, this is called a recurrence relation. Right? Recurrence relation. So at this point we have to solve for one of these. That's what this is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in uh, discrete? Uh, no, in, um, well, yeah, I did it in discrete, but I've been doing it a lot in CS1. Cool. Good. Extra credit. I'm kidding. All right. So which one do you solve for? C sub k plus 2 or C sub k? Do you remember? C sub, K plus C sub K plus 2, the one with the bigger subscript, always, okay? Always. So it'd be C sub K plus 2, K plus 2, K plus 1 equals negative CK. So I just subtracted the CK. All right. Always solve for the one with the bigger subscript, every single time. Why? Because it works. You'll get the answer. It'll work. Then just divide by this. So we have C sub K plus 2 equals negative CK over K plus 2 k plus 1. And this is valid for k equals 0, 1, 2, etc. So we're here. So we're here. So at this point, there's two ways to do this problem, right? Um, there's what's called the, like, I guess the direct method, which is what we'll do in this one. And there's something which is like the indirect method. I made these names up. They're totally made up. It's just two different ways of doing it. We're going to take the direct approach. So the direct approach means you just plug in numbers and go for it. Like, you just, just go for it. Just try to find patterns, right? The indirect approach is very important. So in some of the homework problems, they do this. They want you to find the linearly independent solutions. And on the take home is a question like this. In problems like this, um, you don't want to use this approach. You want to take the other approach, which I'll show you later. But the direct approach um, usually works. It, it, it will work if you think you can find the pattern, right? Uh, I should note, that the answer to this problem can be found in like five seconds, right? You can solve this problem in five seconds. In fact, I'm gonna do it over here on the side just so you see. So before we continue, let me show you something. Let's just solve the actual problem in five seconds. You say, how, well, okay, it's already been five seconds. Maybe not five seconds. Use, 30 seconds. Less than two minutes, go. Yeah, using the ancient methods uh, from exam two. The auxiliary equation, yes! Pro! Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Oh, so good. And so you can subtract one. Oh, that's what life is all about. Take the square root. <coughs> plus or minus i. So you get sine and cosine, right? So you get y equals. Because alpha is 0, beta is 1. So you get e to the 0, x, which is 1. C1, cosine x. So why are we doing this long craziness? Because it's a classroom and we're supposed to learn stuff. And, and plus... Plus, if it's like uh, Rachel said, when you start putting x's here and stuff, you can't, you can't use that method, right? This method works if you have constant coefficients, right? So, all right, so we know. We know what we're looking for. That'll help you on the test, right? So, so you're looking for sines and cosines, right? So now we're just going to start plugging in numbers, and we're going to be super careful. So let's start by plugging in 0. So k equals 0. Could you actually recommend doing that so that we can have an idea of what we're going for? Totally. Totally. Yeah, I recommend on, on the test. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I recommend looking at it and thinking, hey, what is the answer going to be in a problem like this? You might not be able, yeah, yeah, you will be able to, never mind. Uh, I'm thinking. I think so. I don't know. I don't remember. I, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. Find out. Okay, when k is zero, <laughs> when k is zero, you just replace all of the k's with zeros, right? So it'll be c2, <coughs> right? C2. And then all of the k's are 0, so it'll be negative c0, so negative c0, okay, negative c0, and then 2 times 1, right, 2 times 1, right, because k is 0, so you get, so you get 2 times 1. Um, 2 times 1, we're looking for patterns. Uh, that's a factorial, right? So this is negative c0 over 2 factorial. Why is negative c0 in our problem? Why is it in the problem? No, where it, what is it? Oh, we can't find it. We won't be able to find C0 and C1 until we use our initial conditions. That's a really good question. Remember when he went, Matthew asked? He said, what, where is C0 in our problem? That's very important for the next technique. Basically, the, uh, at the end of the problem, we get this. That's a big C. That's a big C, okay? That's the end of the problem. But it's actually equal to little c, little c. So little c0 is big C1, little c1 is big C2. These are going to be the arbitrary uh, constants that you get using your initial conditions. Pretty random, but super important. So then how do we handle them in this particular situation where we're trying to find a pattern? We leave them there okay. using this approach. 
Using the other approach, you can assign numbers to them, which is later on, which I'll show you, which is really... Unknowns. As unknowns. Yeah, good question. Very good question. Really key. Wow, yes. So you just leave them. Yes. Okay, let's go to the next one. Good, good. Really good question. So k equals 1. Yeah, that's the hardest part is dealing with those. So when k is 1, we get 1 plus 2, um, which is 3. So we get c3. And then we're going to get negative c1. And as Matthew said, we're not going to know c0 and c1. So this is negative c1. So k is 1. So 1 plus 2 is 3. And then 1 plus 1 is 2. So we get 3 times 2. 3 factorial. Very good. Like a pro. 3 factorial. 3 factorial. So let's keep going for a little while. You mean, so when do you stop? Whenever you feel like stopping, right? Like whenever you think you have a pattern. Um, that's usually good advice. Usually. I'd like do one more. And if it's four, then we're going to I'll do a couple more. Uh, yes. Play it safe. <laughs> like seven more. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Do 10 more. No, no. C4, that's explosive in movies. Um, so, oh, we're plugging in two. We're plugging in two. Sorry, sorry. Plugging in two. I have to do this, otherwise I'll mess up, right? Because K is two. If I do this, I'm like, oh, K is four. <laughs> and I'll mess up. So when K is two, right, when K is two, we get negative C2. Um, don't you get positive? I, I think so. Let's find out. Two plus two is four. No, the negative is still there. Yes, but whenever you replace C2 with whatever, with the first one, it becomes negative. That's true. It's a good point. So now it'll become positive in the next step. Yeah, good. So C4, yeah, let's do what uh, um, Matthew said. C2 is right here, right? So we can replace uh, C2 with that. So it'll become, oh, negative and negative is positive. So it'll be C0. And then 4 times 3 times 2 factorial. So 4, 3, 2, 1, 4 factorial. Very good. Very good. Some of the patterns in the take home are a little bit harder to find. That's why they're take home. Wait, right? How does it help us that we plug in the C0? Because now I'm confused. Because earlier I saw a pattern, now I don't. Okay, so here we have. When I, left the, when I had it, like when I write it down the way I have it, I have negative C sub 2 equals, I mean, over 4. Uh, factorial. I mean, now I'm seeing a pattern, but when I plug in that C0, I'm like, okay, okay. No, it's only 4 times 3. It's not 4 factorial. Oh, you're right. C2, I think. Okay. Where'd you get that 4 factorial? 4 times 3 times 2 is 4 factorial. Oh, okay. Because it's 2 times 1. No, good. Ask, ask. It's key. It's important. I think on the take home, there's like a 2 to the n n factorial pattern. It's ridiculous. I mean, it's, it's really, really tough. Something like this. There's, there's weird patterns. Remember to work together on that one, okay? Find friends. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, well, he's turning it in today, um, so it's kind of sad. My, my night class, their test is today, and so their take home is due today. Yeah, it's not fair, is it? I know. Huh? I think it's worth way more than your actual test. Your actual test is like 90 points, and the take home is way more. I figured, yeah. Collectively, that's the test. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey! Oh, you're already here. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so now we go to k equals 3. So k equals 3. So we plug in k equals 3. So we get um, c sub uh, 5. c sub 5, right? So we get negative c3. So k is 3. So we get 3 plus 2, which is 5. And then 3 plus 1, which is 4. Ah, I see, said the blind man. We know c3. Right, c3 is right here. But it's, it's negative C1 over 3 factorial. So negative and negative is positive. So it's going to become C1 5 times 4 times 3 factorial. So that's C1. I don't know if you can see down here. C1 over uh, 5 factorial. Yep. And so that would be C5. I'm going to put this in a box so I don't lose it. Okay. Maybe we should do one more. Just, just one more. Hey, Jarrell. All right. Um, mm -hmm. How do we, what's that? What's that? Go ahead. No, never mind, never mind. You see it? I'm, yeah, yeah. You do? I think I'm starting to see it. Okay. Do you want me to go over it again from the beginning? No, you're good. You sure? Yes, yes. Okay, all right. Let's do one more. Let's just, why one more? I don't know. I just want to. I just, I don't know. Why not? This is the only time in your life you're taking this class. K equals four. So when K equals four, we plug it in. We get four plus two, so we get C6. So C6. 
So C6, that's going to be uh, our friend, negative C4. Yes? Hmm? Are we going to do K equals 3? We did it here. Sorry. We did it here. You see it? I know. It's confusing, right? Because you have a 3 and then a 5. I know. I know. That's why I always write it down. So K equals 0 gives us this. K equals 1 gives us this. K equals 2 gives us this. K equals 3 gives us this. It's a lot of like keeping track of stuff, right? K equals 4 gives us this. So negative C4. K is 4. So it's 6 and 5, right? So it'll be 6 times 5. And we know C4, it's right here. Here's C4. So it's just that. So it'll be negative C0, 6 times 5 times 4 factorial, negative C0 over 6 factorial. I think at this point, we can go ahead and finish this question. I'm going to put that in a box as well. Just, just put it in a box. You can always just box stuff. It always looks better. All right. Let me pause here uh, and let everyone catch up. So the next step is like the cool, is the key step. It's like the key step in understanding how it all comes together, right? So it's really really nice. Is it supposed to be negative? <coughs> yes, it is. Mhm. Mm it is. Why? Why does that bother you a little bit? I think I know why, but tell me why. <coughs> Because mm -hmm. notice the pattern, right? If you're, if you're looking for the pattern, think of, look, it's negative, negative, like what the heck, right? Negative again, no, no, positive. Negative, negative, positive, positive. So negative, negative, positive, positive doesn't make any sense. The reason it doesn't make sense is because there's two patterns, right? It's order two. There's two functions, it's a sine and a cosine. Nuts. So this is, this is the direct approach. So we're actually looking for two patterns. Yep. Can you reorder them? We're going to. Absolutely, Matthew. We're going to do that. So we're going to write it all out. We're going to completely spell it out in the next step. And you'll see how both patterns can be easily found. So the direct approach is really pro if you can find a pattern. Yeah. So then that means your 2 factorial 4 and your 6 would be your cosine? That's right. It's going to be your cosine. And the odd ones will be the sine. Yep. So let's completely break it down so you see this problem, how it, how it breaks down. So now we go back to what we started with. So we started with uh, an infinite series, this one here. Right? We start by letting y equal to this. This is the solution to the DE, right? This is the answer, right? This is the answer. So we start by assuming the answer can be written as an infinite sum. So now we're going to write this answer down, but we're going to write it out the long way. So like C0 plus C1x plus C, so the long way, so like this. So it'll be C0 plus C1x plus C2x squared plus C3x cubed plus C4x to the 4 plus C5x to the 5. How far did I go? We went, to, we went to 6. Let's just keep going. Plus C6. Got to make it count. X to the 6 plus dot, dot, dot. If you have a question like this on your test, please show all the work, right? Don't just say, oh, sine, cosine, boom, done. I, say, I, I just need to make sure that you know what you're doing. So like, show the work. Because mm -hmm. you'll know what's a sine and cosine, right? Because you'll know. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we write it out, right? We write it out. Some water. And we're writing out the infinite sum of our original. Yep, because that's the answer, right? It's going to be a sum of two solutions. A sum of two solutions. Let's do it. Oh, a lot of people here now, it's like full. Like, what the heck? So many people here. It's like, oh. It's like the best attendance all semester. There's not a test next week, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> All right, so now, so now we, we finish. So C0 is just C0. He's like, what is it? It's like, Matthew's like, what's C0? What is it? We can't find it yet, right? C0 is going to come from this, right? Again, C0 and C1 are going to be your arbitrary constants that give you the answer. The final answer will be C0 times the first function plus C1 times the second. This is really important to know for the next example. Don't worry, I'll write it down again later, and I'll explain it again later. So, Z, so C0 just stays. C0 just stays. C1 also stays, right? That's going to come from our initial conditions. And so now the uh, magic starts to happen, if you can call it magic. I think it is. We're starting to plug crap in now. Now we're starting to plug stuff in, or that too, yeah. The CARP. I don't want to say it, but yeah. I mean, I don't know. Is that a bad word? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. All right. So C2 is this. I, used to, I don't say bad words anymore. It's weird. I used, to, I used to say bad words a lot before I went to college. And then when I went to college, it like changes the way you talk. My grandpa says crap all the time. Yeah, I say hence and stuff when I'm at the grocery store. Oh, hence it's over there. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's really, yeah, it's really ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, um, so so we have this. People think I'm really well read, but I'm not. It's just it's the math. So we have so so, so like I don't know anything about worldly events or anything. And but people are like, oh, you must be very like into. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> They're just math words. Therefore, therefore we should go to the party. <laughs> so yeah, that comes up on the proofs. Therefore, hence, whence, whence, whitherforth. No, that's not a word. So C two goes here. <laughs> C three is this one. Yeah, yeah. I actually stole that from a student. He said that one one time in class. He said, "Can we sit? Can we use once with or forth?" I'm like, "That's not a word." <laughs> so we get that. Yeah, C four. It's right here. C zero over four factorial. Right, that's C four. C zero over four factorial. So C zero over four factorial. X uh, C five is right here. C1 over 5 factorial, C1 over 5 factorial, that's C5, right? And then C6 is here. This is C6. It's minus C0 over 6 factorial. So, so it's minus C0 over 6 factorial, x to the 6 plus dot dot dot. I think the next one is minus. Someone in my other class pointed that out. He's like, well, shouldn't it be a minus there? Because I put a minus there in my other class. Yeah, but it's plus all of these things, which could be a negative. Right. That's, that. that's, what, that's what, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what was discussed. Good. Yes, deep. OK. Uh, any questions up to here on any of the steps? This is like the key step in the problem. This is the step that most people skip on the test. That's why I'm pausing. Like, people will go from here to the answer. Like, oh, sine, cosine. Like, come on. <laughs> right? Like, I know. <laughs> You get partial credit, right? There's like 30 points on your test or something, right? So it's hard to fail. Most people get this right. Yeah. Why? Because it's, you know, it's almost over. Your grade will get posted soon, right? Like, that's it. Great. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to factor out some stuff so we can pull out all the C zeros. And it's exactly what Matthew said will happen, right? You'll see. So we're going to pull out C zero, or as physics people say, what do physics people call this? C naught. Yeah, C naught. C naught. It's like yell it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, initial C, C initial. I'm not going to call it that. So one. And then this one here will be x squared over 2 factorial. I should take another physics class for fun someday. I would totally do it differently. Plus this one. Minus, and then dot, dot, dot. There's three dots here, okay? It's an infinite sum, parentheses, plus. So all we've done is we've only worked with C sub zero. Okay. Yep. And you put a minus there at the time. Uh, because I know it's going to alternate. I know it's minus, plus, minus. Because uh, I know this is going to be sine x. But the plus dot the dot would still be correct, right? Yes, it would. It would still would be correct. I'd scratch it out and put a minus. No, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> I'd look at it and be like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Can you see okay from over there? Okay. Yeah, it is a little bit. So the problem is? Well, that too. Yeah. Seeing it. Seeing, I know, the, the board is so big. That's the bad thing about these giant boards. Um, the good thing is I don't have to erase the problem. Uh, then we start, we go to C1. I'll write bigger. <laughs> So now the first one will be x, right? X. Minus x to the third. Very good, Ian. Minus x to the third over three factorial. I just trusted you. I didn't even look. Uh, okay, good. Yeah, good. Yeah, a lot of trust there. I wrote it blindly. So and then x to the fifth over five factorial. Minus dot dot dot. Why did it get bigger? Because it did. Fun times. All right. So uh, now we can write everything out, right? So this is the sine function because it has. So you want to memorize this. This is sine x, right? No, no, I misspoke. Which one is this? Cosine x. Yeah, I didn't write it down though, so it doesn't count. But yeah, it was a verbal mistake. So that's cosine x. I don't know. I was thinking about something else. So this is c zero times cosine x. I was thinking about the math club. That's what I was thinking about. So. Because they had an event today, and Gage went, and they gave him a math problem. So is the other one sine x? <laughs> yes, sine was bad. Sine x. It is sine x. Wait, I have an idea. Yeah. You know how sine's an odd function and cosine's an even function? Uh-huh. 
Look at the denominators. That's exactly right. That's exactly how I memorize them. So these are even, so it's going to be even. Cosine's even. These are odd, so it's odd. That's how you should memorize them. Yeah, these are the most important ones. Sine, cosine, and e to the x. That's why, like, yeah, it's like the most important ones. We're done. We just have to use the conditions, right? Our conditions were way over here, right? These are our conditions. So our conditions were these. Y of 0 equals 4, Y prime of 0 equals 2. All we have to do now is use these initial conditions, and we're good. We can find the Cs. So any questions on this problem, on any of the steps? At this point, can we rewrite it as C1 and C2? You can, but I'm going to leave it. But you can't, oh, like big C1, big C2. I'm so glad you understand that. That's so good. I mean, it's so good that you said that means you understand. Yeah. Because see, these little c's are from the power series, but they're actually the arbitrary constants, right? So, so it's actually big C1 and big C2. So I'm going to erase it, but this is actually like, I'm going to erase this. I'm just going to write it first. This is big C1 cosine x plus big C2 sine x, right? It's the same thing. So the terms from the power series, these two in particular are your arbitrary constants of integration that you get in the actual DE, right? So they're your parameters. If you remember from the beginning of class, from the very first day, this is a two-parameter family of solutions, right? <laughs> Throwback, right? First day of class, like... I forgot where we got the big C's from. The big C's come from... So, like, if you are solving this DE... Can you see okay if you're solving this one? Yeah. You do this. Yeah. So you, Okay, so you do this, so you get this. Yeah, cosine. So you get y equals c1 cosine x. Uh, you remember? Yeah. They're the ones that you just put there as part of the answer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so those big C's are actually the little baby C's from the power series. Okay. We're going we're gonna to exploit that fact fully in the next example. It's super powerful. It's not even in the book, I think. Uh, but I saw the technique in a solutions manual online on the internet um, a long time ago. And I'm like, whoa, that's cool. OK, let's finish this problem. So we've got to take the derivative of this. We're really bad to like, mess up here. Oh, yeah, this one we've got to plug it back into the DE and then solve for our initial conditions. Yeah, solve our conditions, yeah. So what's the derivative of cosine? Is it uh, minus sine x? Yeah, so it's minus c0 sine x. I'm actually doing DE in my next class, too. Oh, calc 1. They're doing DE for the first time. Is that, did you write out cosine? No, that's weak. No, that's not cosine x. No, I'm so sorry. That's that's here here. <laughs> that's so weak. That is just weakness here here here. <laughs> oh, I just oh, I just wrote. I wasn't trying to be. No, no, it's okay. That's all right. That's all right. That's okay. It's whatever. Plus C one. <laughs> In Spanish, they're even weirder. Really? Sine is seno, and then cosine is coseno. <laughs> Tangent is tangente. Oh, man. Yeah, I looked it up once because I made a math video in Spanish. Hmm? So they're Yeah, it's, they're hard. it's hard. Cognate is when a word is very similar in another language as it is. Hmm, yeah. interesting. Yeah, I learned that in Spanish class. <laughs> so, so, so y of 0 is 4. So we're going to use that condition first. So let's see. So we're going to plug in 0 here. So it'll be c0 cosine of 0. Plus c1 sine of 0. And that was equal to 4, right? y of 0 is equal to 4. Um, cosine of 0 is uh, 1. Wow, I can't believe what time it is. Wow, what happened to the class? We'll have time for one more. We will. Sine of 0 is um, 0. So therefore, hence, whence c0 is equal to 4. I just wanted to say that. c0 is equal to 4. I know. Yeah, go for it. I know, it's really, I know. It's, uh, go ahead, go ahead. You can move around. It's fun. It's good. Yeah, hey, you can sit here if you want. No, no, then you can't write. <laughs> missed the last class. I got Good job, man. Good job. All right. <laughs> so now we have to use the other condition. Y prime of 0 equals 2, right? So the other, the other condition was this one. So we're going to use that here. So Y prime of 0 is negative c0 sine 0, right? Negative c0 sine 0. So negative c0 sine 0 uh, plus c1 cosine 0. So c1 cosine 0. I like this problem. It's so much fun compared to some of the other ones. And that was equal to 2. That's just this. Really bad. Looks really confusing. Sorry. So just putting zeros here and setting it equal to 2. That's all we're doing. So c1 is 2. Yeah, because this is 0, right? Sine of 0 is 0, cosine of 0 is 1, right? So putting a 0 here, this just goes away. Putting a 0 here, we, do, we get cosine of 0, which is 1. So we get c1 equals 2. 
So now we have C naught or C initial C sub zero and C one. So the final answer to the question is y equals uh, where is it? oh here we are. So C zero was four, so it's four cosine x, four cosine x, uh, and then um, C one is two, so it's uh, two sine x. Thank you, two sine x, sine x. Long problems, right? These problems wear you down. They're long. Very long math problems. We've been working on this problem for like, I don't know, 30 minutes? It seems like for, I mean, I, when, when did the class start? Well, it's 1.15. Yeah, I and mean, we went really slow, going slow, just make sure you get it. It's worth it. I mean, rush through this, it's game over, it's useless. Like, <laughs> it's like just <laughs> more lost before you see it. Right? So any, huh? Yeah, we're going to do another one now. We're going to do one from the homework. So there's, there's two review questions from 6.2 uh, from the homework. We're going to do one of them now. Any questions on this one? Anyone like this stuff besides me? Anyone? Oh, good, good. Oh, I hope you get an A. Good. All right, so let's, let's. I mean, it's all fun. There's, there's nothing I like particularly more than the other one. It's all yeah. Fun. Yeah, there's some math I don't like, though. I've taken math classes that I hated. I mean, that's just, it's just like. Abstract algebra. No, I love abstract algebra. That's like my, yeah. Oh. Oh, uh, um, I, took a, I took a class on graph theory and combinatorics. And um, I like the combinatorics part. But I didn't like the graph three part. I didn't and like discrete. I love discrete. I don't know if it was the teacher. But I don't know. Could be. A lot of times it is. Yeah. This is DE. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of graph theory. I, on the test, I failed. I missed every single graph theory question. Oh, man. Yeah, and then but I got all the counting questions right, so I got a B. So. Oh, uh, Jordan says hi. Oh, cool. I saw her before. Oh, sorry, I said hi. It's really cool. Uh, let's no, number nine. Number nine. Jordan was in my class many years ago. Uh, she's she was, she has a math degree, right? Um, she's, get, she's hopefully gonna be done next semester. Like, it's cool. She's had some struggles with mine, so. but yeah, she was. She and I were in his uh, his class. Um, five years ago, right? Or six yeah, years? Five years ago. Why double prime? <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna start here, okay? Because I'm a little concerned about room. This is number nine. <laughs> So why double prime? Anyone have it up, the homework? Um, yeah, please. So. Uh huh. Because I forgot already, short term memory. Right. Hello. Uh, y double prime <laughs> minus 2xy prime plus 8y equals 0. And we have some conditions, right? Uh, y of 0 is 6, and then y prime of 0 is 0. Okay. All right. All right. So we're going to start it the same way. Uh, the same way we started. Uh, the other ones. Okay, this one's going to be tough. I'm going to write a little bit smaller on this one. Okay, um, this problem is tough. This is hard. This is the hardest problem in the homework. It begins. All right, solution. <laughs> so, so we start. SOL, yeah. <laughs> so we start. Yeah, no, yeah, well. So you start uh, by writing the infinite sum. I used to have this teacher who used to do that. He used to write SOL, but he was really hard. So. Yeah, I didn't like the class. So we start at zero. And then we have C sub n. Nice guy, though. You can always write SOL. All right, now we got to take the derivative. Not once, but twice, right? So every time we take the derivative, we shift up also, right? So let's do it. So y prime. Problems, this problem is pretty tough. My night class was blown away by this problem. They were like, oh my god, what's going on? John texted me and he was like, dude. John? Oh, Michael Jordan? No, John Shepard. Oh, Shepard. Like, life is over. <laughs> so this is, C yeah, we, we spent like an hour on it. So this is going to be interesting. Uh, see how long we spend in this class. Mm -hmm. It's not that bad. People were confused about uh, what you were asking about earlier. The C0 and C1, that was the confusion, I think, that those are the arbitrary constants. So we're going to use that in this problem. So in this example, we're going to use what's called the indirect approach. Now we start at 2. Then we have C sub n. I'm running out of room here. Uh, n, n minus 1, x to the n minus 2. I don't know if you can see that. n minus 2, is that? Yeah, it's on the thing. Yeah, I don't know why I did that. It's weak. It's just, OK. Yeah, whatever works. OK, so we're here. Now we got to plug it into the DE. So plug into DE. So, so y double prime, I'm going to come way over here. So we have infinite sum. I'm running, I know I'm running small, sorry. n equals 2 to infinity, right, c sub n, n, n minus 1, x to the n minus 2. So I've just plugged in 
y double prime. It's all that's been written on the board, right? Just the y double prime minus 2x. Then we have y prime. So uh, infinite sum, 1 to infinity, c sub n, and x to the n minus 1. Okay? And then we go to the last one, um, which is 8y, right? So it's 8 times this one. I just remembered something that I never talk about that I can just talk about while I'm writing if I don't mess up and while you're writing. Um, there's no retakes in this class, right? But the final exam does replace your lowest score, right? So, so you can get an A in the class. Even if you have a C in the class, you can still get an A. So if you, if you hmm? Study hard, kids. Yeah. Yeah, you, the, your first test was a take home, which was really good because of the hurricane, but like, it's also kind of bad because the final is a lot from the first test, so just make sure to study for the final. It's not bad though, you, you can get 100. So do, you could like, you could take all the questions from the first test, try and do it without looking at the answers, take the review, try and do it without the answers, go to the home. Oh, you'd be more than ready. Yeah, if you just do the review questions, you are ready. There's like 32 of them or something. If you just do those, that's it, you're ready. You get 100. Done, okay. Um, before we do the thing with the k's, this is something that Rachel mentioned earlier. You see how there's an x here? We're going to distribute the x, okay? Um, and when we do that, there's an x to the 1 here. So when you multiply these, you're going to add the exponents. So 1 plus n minus 1 is just n. So, so let's go ahead and do that first. I'm gonna, I know it's painful, but we have to rewrite everything just to do that one step. It's like, ah, uh, uh, so let's do it. Ugh. Honestly, why are you doing that? Because we're because if we call it k and we make it n minus one, make, if we make it k, when we multiply by x, we'll get k plus one, and it ruins everything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, good question. Hmm? <coughs> yeah, distribute this. Can we distribute the n on the first term. I wouldn't. I would leave it like this. Good question. Good question, Ian. Let's just leave it. Yeah. You can, but it's not a good idea. Typically, it's not. Um, it's not necessary. It doesn't help or hurt. It maybe hurts more. Yeah, it does hurt a little bit, actually. Uh, minus, I'm going to go ahead and distribute the 2 as well. So n is 1 to infinity, 2, c sub n, n, and then here's the key step, x to the n, right, n. Because 1 plus n minus 1 is n, right? That's the key step. Why did I put the 2 in there? Hmm? Should I put the 2 in there as well? Why did I put the 2 in? No, the two, but why are we doing, why are we just the x Because we want to we have everything together before we make the, k, the thing with the k's. Because there's an x here, you want to put it in the sum. Would two get swallowed by the cn? Uh, you sure? You see how we did that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you don't do that and you just go to the next step with the k's, you have to distribute it later anyways. So then you would get k plus one. Sorry, someone says I wasn't paying attention. No, that's right. Uh, does two get swallowed by the c? Uh, no, no, it doesn't. Just leave it. Mm -hmm. Good question. And then here we have 8 C sub n swallowed. I got a mental image when you said that of like a giant fish or something. Like. So, you pretty much, <laughs> so you pretty much you only want operators between the, um, between the sums. Right, right, right. I don't know why I'm thinking of a giant. Oh, I know why I'm thinking of a giant fish. Okay. <laughs> Any questions so far on this one? We're okay with the steps? Any questions? All right. So now we do the thing with the case, right? Now we do that thing with the case. So we call this k. We call this k, which is psychotic. We call this k, which is even more crazy. Um, so, so, so k equals n minus 2. I'm going to write even smaller now. Game over. No, I can't write smaller than this. I'll have to go to that board after this, I think. Maybe. So k is n minus 2. And when you solve for n, um, you get k plus 2. I'm going to have to go a little bit faster soon. Well, we have, we have 20 minutes, 21 minutes. We're, we're good. Slow time down. Then here we have k equals n. And n equals k. Whoa, magic. k equals n. <laughs> n equals k. I don't know. I just made this up. It's just... I don't even know if this is in the book. I, I, again, I, I didn't I did learn this on my own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what makes this one a little bit harder. Yeah, it makes it more annoying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, rewrite the whole thing. Now I got to rewrite the whole thing. I don't know if I should write it here. Can you all see down here? Is that okay? All right, I'm going to do it here then, okay? So we have, I'm going to start over here. So we have infinite sum, and then we'll go to that board. We've made a lot of progress on this board, so that's really good. So k here, k 
here starts at um, zero. zero. Yeah, because two minus two is zero, right? So to infinity. And then there's just a lot of bookkeeping here. So n is k plus two. So it's c sub k plus two. Uh, n is k plus two, so k plus two. k plus two minus one is k plus one. And then we have x to the k. All right, minus. And then these remain unchanged, right? <coughs> n is k and k is n, so nothing really happens in these, right? You just you just keep the k's in the n. Can you see? Sorry, you keep the you keep these. Everything is the same in this case, right? So all I'm going to do is now is I'm going to re rewrite all of this, and just keep it the same. Are you going to change the n for k's though? That's all I'm going to do. Yeah. So so let's do that. So k is one to infinity two c k k. I know that's really bad. When I write the c k, it's it's you have to be careful. What I do to help me see it is I do a parenthesis. You could do that. Sure, go for it. Yeah, because I know, I know, right, Patrick? You do this and you're in a hurry. It's like, ooh, CKK, CK squared, game over, right? <laughs> yeah, right? It's really easy to mess up. Um, yeah, plus, ah, weak, K equals zero. Let's squat down. Infinity, eight, CK. I wish I was shorter. Uh, X to the K. No, I'm kidding. I don't wish I was shorter. <laughs> equals zero. Is that. <laughs> No one says, I wish I was a little bit shorter. I'm like, no, that's, 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 so I can squeeze it under things. No. <laughs> huh? Yeah. 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 There's, never mind. Okay. Any questions up to here on this one? I was going to say, there's a teacher once I've heard of, some artist school, and she's really short. And when she teaches, she can only write this high. <coughs> so, like, if you come into the classroom, it's, it's just <laughs> kind of, she's a really good teacher. Yeah. Um, you have a k equals one. Is that what we're doing? I know it's kind of uncomfortable. Yep, I know. So now we combine the, the first one and the third one. Not yet. Oh. Not yet. We we could do that, but we want them all to start at the same thing, at the same number. Uh, so do you remember which one we have to make a start at? Plug in the, the one. Right? Yes. Uh, no. Plug in the zeros. The highest one. Good, Jarrell. So we want them all to start at the highest one. We want them all to start at one. That's always the rule, okay? So you just take a zero and you put it here. Take a zero and you put it here, and you start them all at one. If this was a if this was a three, then they all have to start at what number? Three. So you plug in zero, one, two. Plug in one, two, and you start them all at three. Okay. What if this is a three, and this is a six? What do they all start at? Six. Six. And here you plug in what? One, two, three, four, five. And then here. <coughs> Three, four, five. Right. That's for the take home. The take home has one that's brutal. At the end of class, if we have time, I'll, I'll, I'll help you with that. Uh, there's, a, there's a key step in, on number seven, which is completely insane. Uh, but I don't know if we'll have time. Let's just, I, I don't even know if we'll finish this problem. Let's just keep going. So now I'm going to rewrite everything. Start at one and plug in zero here and plug in zero. So I'm going to come to this board here. So rewriting this. So I have infinite sum. K equals one to infinity. We're starting them both, all of them at one. So C sub K plus two. Uh, k plus 2, uh, k plus 1, x to the k, right, starting it at 1, right, starting this one at 1. And then minus, this one's already started at 1, so I'll leave it. So minus k equals 1 to infinity, k equals 1 to infinity, um, 2 ck k, to really focus, it's a lot to copy, 2 ck k, x to the k, my handwriting is terrible, let me just, there we go, it's a little bit better. And then k equals 1, 8 ck, got it. So plus, so plus infinite sum, k equals 1 to infinity, 8 ck, x to the k, and then we're not done, right, we're not, yeah, we got to add those terms. So let's see, let's be really careful. So here we have to plug in zero, right? So it'll be C2 times, times two, right? So two C2, everyone see it? Because we're plugging in zero. So it goes away. So, so two C2. So it's plus also, it's a plus two C2. It's really hard. Plus two C2, and then, oh, then here, then here. Eight C0, like a pro. Oh, you're born for series, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> so. People have a hard time with this. This is, I mean, this is pretty sophisticated. This is like the last topic in DE, so. Yeah, I, I, don't, even, I don't have videos on the internet for problems this long, because I always give up. <laughs> I've tried to make them with that thing I write on, the black one, and I remember a couple years ago, this girl was like, oh, can you make a video? I was like, okay, so I went home and I tried it. I tried it like three times and I gave up every time. It's too long. 
I'm, I only can do it because you're here to help me. <laughs> like, you catch my mistakes, right? Like, oh, you should be an infinity there. Oh, like, you know. Huh? This is a review question. So then you're expecting it to do the problem, like, like here at school, to read the video, and then like, and like pause, like after every so often to check your work. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, yeah. That's true. It's true. It's a good idea. It's a good idea. This one, this one will be on the internet eventually if it's recording. Uh, so minus 2CK uh, plus 8CK. And then here we have x to the uh, k plus all of this, right? Ridiculousness. We probably won't finish this problem. I don't know. I don't know. Let me not be so negative. <laughs> we still have 15 minutes. Maybe positive. Let's be positive. <coughs> it's kind of cool if you think about it. Like people were doing this like 100 years ago. Same problem, right? Huh? Well, I think they had boards 100 years ago, didn't they? Or they had whiteboards? Well, they had the chalk chalkboards. Yeah, they had chalkboards. I like chalkboards, but yeah, I like getting it on my face and my. I don't, okay, I just <laughs> let me just. <laughs> All right, so now we set each piece equal to zero. I don't know why I said that. So we take this and set it equal to zero. So we have c sub k plus two. It feels like you work, like when you get chalk all over your hands and your clothes. You know, it's like like if you work outside, you know how you get dirt on your hands and like. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to do tree work, and I've, I've done all kinds of work, so. Did you climb the trees? No, my buddy was a climber, though. Uh, I would just, like, jump on the truck and tear it down with a chainsaw. Really brutal. This starts at 1. It starts at 1. So, yeah. It was fun when I would take my friends with me to work with him, like, you know, for a day. To see how this, how, yeah, like, hey, you want to come work? Make 50 bucks? They totally destroyed. Um, <laughs> Horse ranch. Horse ranch? I found him for one day and never came back. Yeah, I've done that. That's so much fun. It makes you feel good about your job. Like, yeah, I can handle this. <laughs> <laughs> then you have to set this equal to zero as well. This is a constant term, okay? So the entire term gets set equal to zero. This is extremely important. So you don't set each piece equal to zero. You set the entire term equal to zero. So 2C2 plus 8C0 equal to zero. So the entire piece is equal to zero, okay? I hate to derail, but let me just emphasize this some more because this is very important. Let's suppose for a moment, just really briefly, and I shouldn't do this, but it's too late because I've already started, so I can't go back. Let's suppose for a moment that you had like 2C2 plus 8C0 plus, I, I don't know, uh, C, C3X plus 4C4X equals zero. If you had something like this, you would, you would, write, you would group these like this. Then you would factor out an x here, right? You would write it like this. This is for the take home. Uh, this, this example might be nonsensical, but who cares? And then we have an x here. <coughs> and the point I'm trying to make, I guess, is that you set each of these pieces equal to zero individually, right? So you set this equal to zero, and you, so you would do 2c2 plus 8c0 equal to zero. Then you would do c3, I can't write any faster, my arm hurts. I set that equal to zero. So that's the point. This is not going to come up on the homework, but it'll come up on the take home. I'm just thinking, what if the D wasn't equal to zero? And you can't oh, it will. Oh, yeah, it's different. Okay. But, so, that, just, so in my head, I'm like, well, I should be falling together. Mm -hmm. Is that equal to that term? Oh, why, don't you, why don't you move uh, 2C2 plus 8C0 over to the other side and then divide it by, or to isolate C2 plus, or CK plus 2? No, because we're, we're equating coefficients. So basically, all of this is equal to zero, and all of this is equal to zero. Because this is equal to this. That's the constant term. Good question. So again, if you, have, if you have multiple terms, like over here, if you have like x terms and stuff, group the x terms together, then set them equal. This is for number seven in the take home. Again, work together on that one, right? Just, you know. Because mm -hmm. it's really tough. Like, it'll take you hours for that. I mean, it's, it's very hard. Uh, all right, so now we're here. So let's, let's finish. Let's at least get this far. Which one do we solve for? K plus two, the one with the K or the K plus two? The K plus two, the bigger one, right? The one with the bigger subscript, right? Um, why? Because it works. So I'm going to do it in steps. So C sub K plus two, K plus two, K plus one. <coughs> and then we add this and subtract this. Yes? I think I might have made a mistake, but I want to understand why. Um, when you're equating coefficients, that line, I have a negative 2c2. Um, oh, it's from here. It's, two, it's positive. Oh, 
whenever you plug in uh, zero for the term all the way at the top of the board. This one? Uh huh. Over. Over one. You don't plug in zero for this one. Uh, it's already at one. <laughs> yeah. So, so then add this. So you get two. I'm going to put the K in the front because it's really bothering me. 2K. I'm going to improve my handwriting. CK. Now we won't be able to finish. It's all right, though. Minus 8CK. And now we're going to divide by K plus 2 and K plus 1. Okay, so we have um, C sub K plus 2 equals... I'm going to... No, 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 no. You set, you set this equal to zero, <coughs> right? And then you set this equal to zero. Okay. So we're solving this one for C sub K plus two. Uh, okay, okay. So we added this over and subtracted. No, it's okay. No, that's all right. Ask. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make a really bold move here, uh, but it's okay. It's good for you. I'm going to pull out the two and the CK and then divide by this. So it'll be two. K minus 4, C sub K. I'm letting it hang out at the end for notational purposes. That's the top. And then on the bottom we have K plus 2. This problem is notorious. K plus 1. And this is for K equals 1, 2, et cetera. Okay, et cetera. So we're here. Okay, I'm going to put this in a box because that was an accomplishment. That's the recurrence relation. What do you do here? Very good question, Matthew. So just like before, we continue our pattern. We solve for the one with the bigger subscript. So we solve for C2. Super important. So solve for the one with the bigger subscript. So subtract C0. 8C0. 8C0. <laughs> Divide by 2. So we get C2 equals negative 4C0. I'm going to put that in a box as well because that is extremely important uh, for us to use in this problem. Right. So we're here. If you had this example here, this fake example here, uh, in this case you would solve for C2. And in this case, which one would you solve for? C4, because it's the one with the bigger subscript, right? Very good. So that was a really good question that Matthew had, like which one to solve for, right? The one with the bigger subscript, okay? So now we're going to take the uh, indirect approach. We have like eight minutes, we probably won't finish it, but let me explain it. Let me explain how it works, and then next time we'll do it. So the indirect approach is a made up name. I made that name up. Okay, it's just completely made up. Let me just. So here's the idea. So here's the idea. So you could just plug stuff in and look for a pattern, but yuck, right? What if you can't find the pattern? In fact, this problem is so tough, we won't be able to find the pattern. Something else will happen, and it's really tricky. So here's the idea. The final answer, we know that the final answer is C0Y1 plus C1Y2. We talked about that before. Let me write a little bit cleaner. So the final answer is C sub 0, Y1, plus C sub 1, Y2. That's the final answer, right? And then we find, we find the little C0 and the C1 using these, right? And in the previous problem, it was, uh, I believe it was cosine, and it was sine in the previous problem, right? OK. So in this problem, we're not, finding the pattern is just too hard. So we're going to manipulate this to find the answer. Here's how you do it. So let's pretend we wanted to find y1. So to find y1, I've never written this down before, ever on the board. Try something new. Maybe this will make it make more sense. I've never written it. Hopefully it makes sense. So to find y1, let's think about what we can do to find y1. So we would need to get rid of y2. And we, so if we got rid of this, if we got rid of this, what would c0 have to be for y to be equal to y1? One. one. So we set c0 equal to 1 and c1 equal to 0. If we do that, then y is equal to 1 times y1 plus 0 times y2. So y is equal to y1. Yes? Why can we assume y equals y not y1 plus c1 y2? That's always the case. So remember, we know that the final answer is big c1 y1 plus big C2, Y2. That's the answer, we know that. Yeah, from, from previous chapter four. And in the previous example, if we can use that as, an, as a guide to convince ourselves, uh, we saw that it was actually this, remember? And, oh, oh, still on the board, look! Oh, you see it? Yeah. See, that's the Y1, that's the Y2. So the idea is, yeah, that's it, that's, that, that's yeah. <laughs> so that's why. <laughs> so, so do you see why though it's equal to y1? When we do that, everyone see why? So you want to memorize this. So this K 
gives you y1. Okay, so in the, on the take home, it says y1 fill in the blank. This is what you do. So you, you plug in these numbers and then you just plug in numbers. It's, you know how in the previous example, uh, Matthew said, what happens to the C0 and the C1? They just hang out. They won't hang out anymore. They'll be gone, right? They'll be just numbers. So it makes it easier to find the pattern because you have pure numbers. To find y2. So you just plug in one and zero. Yes. You just plug them in. Yep. Yep, to find the format. Yep. And to find y2, it's very similar. So let's see, we would have to make c0 equal to zero. And then what would c1 have to be to find y2? C1 would be one. Would be one. That means you get it. Oh my god. So good. Yeah, my night class had a really hard time with this. Probably because I didn't write this down. I didn't write down two fine y1. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of important. Yeah, I just said it. I kept saying it, but I never wrote it down. Maybe that's why. I don't know. Oh well, it's too late. Hopefully they do good on their test. <laughs> <laughs> they'll watch the, no, this video will be probably not be up for a while, but yeah, if they ever watch it. I'm sure they'll be fine. Now, did you say you had any videos doing this test? Yes. Yes, not this one. This one I don't have, but I have the one you missed and the one we did before this. I have videos of those on the playlist. Is it the? This is called the indirect. No, they're both the direct. Indirect. Program. I don't have any of the indirect ones because I'm weak. Okay. So how does y equal y one help you solve the problem? Okay, very good. So once we do this, once we do this, right? Once we have y one and y two, then so after we do all of this, then. And finish. That's the idea. <coughs> right? Because we have y1 and y2. We have two linearly independent solutions. We know the general solution is a linear combination of those solutions. So once we have like cosine and sine, we know the final answer is this. Right? So once we have these, we do this. And then to find the c's, we go back way over here, right? way over here, and we use our initial conditions right, to find the C's. So that's the plan. right? We're not going to be able to do it today, but that's the idea. You know what we should do? We should just start it. So you see how it works, then we'll start it again next time. So let's, uh, you know what? This didn't happen. So, so, so first, let's do this one. So first, Y1. Oh, I'll even write it down. I never do that. Let's be different. So C0 equals 1. C1 equals 0. Oh, it's too far away, but it's OK. So we have this. Hmm? Can read something to you over there? No, I, I'm going to walk over there. Because check it out. Now we have to find C2. Well, where do we look to find C2? We look here. So if C2 is negative 4C0, that's going to give us C2. So C2 is negative 4 times 1. So C2 is negative 4. I box them all. Why? Because I don't want to lose track. It gets so complete. We're not even like close to being. We're all, maybe like another 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we're going to pick up from here next time. So we're here. So now what do you do? So, so you do this because you memorize it. You use this condition to find C2. On the take-home test, you'll have, oh, it's gone, but you'll have, multiple, you'll have multiple things like this you have to use first, okay? So we use this. We use this. We take the one. We plug it in here. That gives us the C2. So now we have to find C3, but check this out. If you look over here, when, you, when K is equal to 1, you get C3. Right? So when k is 1, you get c3. So now, now what you do is you do this. You do, OK, k equals 1, c3. Well, c3 is over here. So it'll be negative 2. Oh my god, yes. Even better. What's c1? c1 zero. zero. So, so all of this is going to be 0, because it doesn't matter, right? So c3 is 0. Everyone see that? Because we plug in 1 here, C1 is 0. See? C1 is 0. So it's 0. And then you do K equals 2. <coughs> K equals 2. So K equals 2 will give you um, C4. <laughs> so you get C4. So then you go over here and you plug in 2's for everything. right? I'll go ahead and do it. So you get negative 2. So we're going to get negative 2. It's K minus 4, so it's 2 minus 4. C2 over, I'm going to do all this over for, next time from the beginning. I'll rewrite everything on the board and start over. So this will be negative 2 times negative 2. Oh my god, it's too hard. So negative 2 times negative 2. And C2 is negative 4. 
four, three. Completely ridiculous. I don't even know what's going on. What do you do here? Let's see. Uh, 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 math. Well, I mean, you got, is that a negative two outside? So it shouldn't be a, it shouldn't be a negative two. Should it be negative 16? Yeah, let me just read you the way. Yeah, so it's going to be negative 16. Yeah, negative 16 over 4 times 3. So 4 times 3 is 16. Negative 16 over 4 times 3 is 16. Negative 16 over 4 times 3 is 16. So 4 goes into 16 4 times. Mm -hmm. Why is that negative 2? The negative 2 is already there. Where? It's hanging. Uh, it's not a negative 2. Oh my god, it's a two! It's a mistake! Oh, so well, yes, you do, but class is over. No! No! No, I should have stopped class. All right, so, so, it's, okay. so it's still right. Is, is, it, that's a, is that right? Four thirds? It is, right? Is it right? Is it right? Gibson? Gibson says right. It's right. All right. Next time, I'm going to write this down, right, at the beginning of class, and we'll start over. To continued. Continued. And do you, do you all have those notes? Do you have the, so what was the, uh, what was the C sub K plus one? Or was it C sub K plus two? Can you read it to me? Uh, what was it? Two K. No, no, what, what is it though? C what? C. All right, C K plus two mm -hmm. equals um, two K C sub K minus eight C sub K all over K plus two times K plus one. K plus two. K plus one. And then we had some other condition, didn't we? Some other, like, the little dangling parts. Do you remember what the other condition was? Yeah, it was uh, C sub two is equal to negative four C sub zero. Okay, very good. And then we had initial conditions at the beginning of the problem. Do you remember what those were? Uh, y of zero six mm -hmm. times zero zero. Perfect, thank you so much. So this is what we had uh, from last, yes? Is that C sub K or eight C sub K or eight C K? It's eight C sub K. It's eight C sub K. Yeah, it's eight C sub K. Good. And this is these are C sub Ks. Yeah. And so as you write down, the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite this because uh, this can be written in a better way, right? What we can do here is we can pull out a CK, and we can also pull out a number. We can pull out a um, two, I believe, right? So let's do that. So C sub K plus two. This problem is really tough. Is equal to two CK uh, parentheses K minus four, and then on the bottom we have K plus two. Uh, k plus 1, right, k plus 1. And then we have uh, this condition up here. I'm going to put this in a box because this is important. And I don't remember what this was, but this was valid for k equals, anyone remember where it started? Was it, was it 1? You started it. No, was it 1? Yeah. Was 1? Was 1? So one, two, et cetera. Okay. This is where we continue from last time, right? So just continuing, continuation of last time's super problem, right? So, and I think this is like number nine in the homework or something, right? So this is just like a regular homework question. I think Josh, you finished it, right? How long did it take you to finish it, Josh? Um, mm -hmm. I worked on it for about an hour. About an hour. Good. Good. It's good. It's good. It's good. I was hoping you say like 24 hours, but no. <laughs> like three days. No. <laughs> All right. So, um, so now uh, we're ready to go. So, oh, oh. So we're using the indirect method, right? We were talking about that, right? So the way it worked, I'm going to write it, then I'll erase it. So the idea was, so I'll go over it one more time. The idea was that the final answer uh, was C0 Y1 plus C1 Y1. That the Y2. That's the final answer, right? To the DE. And the idea is that uh, when we do this. Uh, we do the following. We make C0 equal to 1 and C1 equal to 0. And when that happens, what happens is that this one goes away, so you just get Y equals Y1, right? Because this is 1 and this is 0, right? So that's the first thing we do. And then, and then we flip them, okay? So we do this, C0 equals 0, C1 equals 1, okay? And in this case, that gives us Y equals uh, Y2, okay? Once we have these, we can write our final answer down, and then we can use our initial conditions, and we can finish the DE. So this is the indirect method. So your take-home test is actually due next time, right? Your test is next time. I posted an announcement on WebAssign, how many questions. Your in-class test is really easy, right? Just go over the, just go, I gave you review questions this time, because you have the take-homes, and I felt bad. So just go over the review questions, and you'll be okay. But you need this uh, for number seven in the take-home, right? So you, because it wants Y1 and Y2 in that problem. Okay. So first we're going to do this, okay? That's what we're going to do first. Okay, so let's do it. So C0 equals 1. Not a lot of people here today. It's because it's the day before Thanksgiving. The, parking, the faculty parking lot was like empty. Uh, and then C1 equals 0. <coughs> so we have this. So we have these two conditions here. Okay, these two here. So C2 is negative 4. 
That's what pros do. Yes, very good, because you go over here. Good, yes, oh my God. Yes, because now you use this to get C2. Yes, oh, from, from the air. Um, so C2 is negative four, very good. So C2, it's negative four times one, right? Times, I'll, I'll put the one there, but it's really negative four. So it's gonna be, I forgot the negative. There it is right there, it, uh, see, that's what, that's, pros do that. They don't forget stuff, but I did. So C2 is negative four, C2 is negative four. So, so we have to do that first. So we use this to find C2. On the take home, it'll be like that also, right? Um, except it's worse um, because you have a bunch of stuff like this, right? Okay, uh, so now we have to find, oh, remind me at the end of class to give you a hint for the take home question. Please remind me, don't forget, okay? It's super important. You're gonna write it down? Write it down. Write it in the corner or Write it down, yeah, yeah, hint. So don't forget here, don't <laughs> forget. <laughs> The hint. <laughs> it's really important. Without this, you, you'll get super stuck. Um, just I'll know what I'm talking about because I'll remember it. Okay. Yeah, I, I, it has to do with this. Okay. Okay. So now, now we go to this. So when k is equal to one, we take the one and we plug it in here. So we'll get one plus two. So we get c three. So we get c three. Hi Matthew. So we get c three. <laughs> so we get c three. Uh, so k is one. Oh, oh, yes, yes, this is so good. Look what happens here. When you plug in one, you get c1, but what is c1 in this case? Zero. zero. Very good, zero. So this whole thing is just zero. zero. Yep, isn't that cool? Because c1 is zero, right? So when you plug in one, you get c1 here, so we got lucky. I'm gonna put this in a box. I like boxing stuff. It just keeps things organized, right? keeps things organized. And again, when you're working on your take home test, don't feel discouraged if you can't do it. It's normal. Remember, you get partial credit too. Um, so, and plus the majority of your test is take home, right? So the in class, it's not that many points. So anyways, k equals two. When do we stop? I have no idea. Let's just keep going and see if we can find a pattern. So k equals two, that'll give us C4. Explosion, C4. C4 is an explosive in movies. Um, so we get, C2, so 2C2, two this one's gonna be not fun. This is gonna be 2C2, two 2C2, two two, and then two minus four is negative two, so that gives us negative two. And then two plus two, two plus one. So two plus two is four, right? And then two plus one gives us three. Ian's not here today. Mm -hmm. I that. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people skip today. It's normal, Every it's just, the way it is, uh, C2 is four, oh, it's negative four. It's really confusing, so it's two, negative four, negative two, why am I not multiplying stuff? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, now we can do it all now, or we can cancel, we can cancel um, the negative, the, 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 the fours. So this is gonna be um, four over three, thanks. Four over three, I'm trying to, yeah, it's, but yeah, I don't like skipping steps when you do this. It's really easy to mess up, right? That's that's why they take so long to do in class. It's because we're actually going really slow. When you do these, you probably go a lot faster, right? It's just there's so many little steps. Like yeah, Patrick's <coughs> right. Um, so C four is is four thirds. So C four is four thirds. This 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 DE is famous, by the way. It has a name, didn't it? Wasn't it uh, the what is it? The Hermitian differential equation or something? Yeah, it's some famous differential equation. The one we're solving. So we're solving something famous. Kind of, yeah. I don't know who that was, but I don't know. I googled it, but I didn't read that much about it. But he told me about it, and it's true. This is about where we ended last. Time. Okay, okay. Let's do. Let's do, let's keep going. Um, let's do for k equals three. Hey, so for k equals three. So for k equals three, we get c five, right? C five. See, oh, oh, this is beautiful because when k is three, we get c five, right? But c three is zero. Right, C3 is zero. So this is just gonna be zero. So this, this is just zero, so, so it's zero. So it's zero, because C3 is zero, right? C3 is equal to zero, so when you plug in three, you do get zero, so it works out, it works out really nice. Let's keep going. Again, I don't know when to stop. I, I, I don't remember what happens in this problem. I wish I did, because uh, I would feel better about it. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna come over here just to use this piece of the board because <laughs> it's there. So k equals four. 
Notice how I underline everything and box everything. That's for my benefit too, so I don't get lost. So I know what's going on, right? It's good to be organized. So k equals four is going to give us c six. Oh, what is this going to be? Anyone know? C four, which is four thirds. C four, which is four thirds. What's the whole thing going to become though? When you plug in four, what do you get? Zero. Zero. Yeah, everyone see it? Because four minus four is zero. This is beautiful. Zeros are good, so this is zero. I'm going to put that in a box. Again, just box everything in, keep it nice and neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I forget you're in Calc 3 tonight, yep. right? Yep. Yeah, when we do that, though, we always got to be careful and make sure that the bottom's not undefined. Yeah, oh, if that happens, there's like some serious issues. Like, you did it seriously wrong, probably. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's something really bad going on if it's undefined. <laughs> yeah. No, you should. No, it's good. It's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see, what, k equals five. Let's see what happens there. So k equals five. It's gonna give us c7, right? Because five plus two is seven. Uh, we get c5 though, and I think c5 is zero. zero. So this is zero. So you just, it's zero, so it's like forever zero. It's forever zero now, because when you plug in six, you get c6, but c6 is zero, right? So now, now you have, now when you have, now they're all gonna be zero now. If I plug in six, you plug in C6 and you'll get zero. So I'll, I'll just do it just for clarity. When you plug in six, you get C8, right? But C6 is, is zero, so the whole thing is zero. So let's, let's do what pros do. So now we can just say C9 equals C10 equals dot, 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 three dots equals zero. So they're all zero from this point on. We rarely get to do that in math, especially like, I don't know, it's pretty rare. When you, when you put equals, equals, it's like, an, it's like an infinite set. It's like infinitely many equalities there, right? So there's infinitely many, and then it's all equal to zero. It's kind of fun. I know, it's pretty cool. I know. It's like, not, you can't do it every day, right? I mean, I guess you could. You could wake up in the morning and write that down on a piece of paper, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Any questions? So, uh -huh. so we're doing this for, for... Y1. Y1. So now we're going to write down Y1. So... <clears throat> Well, the, you call this the indirect approach. Yeah, indirect approach. So now we're gonna now we're gonna write down y one. So y one is equal to well, it's it's c zero plus c one x. Because we basically just made this up. Mm -hmm. So and then I'll just so I'll just I'll I'll do one more. Right. So now I just go back to to the original function, which is y, but it's y one. Remember, oh, I erased it. But VR trick, it's it's gonna be y one via our, our magic trick. Um, so it's equal to y1. So this is interesting. Um, so you just write that down, and then on the on the take home test, it'll tell you how many terms. It'll say like first four non. So you know when to stop. Okay. Yes. What is y1? So y the final answer is this. The final answer to the de is this. So what? Ah, yeah, I did that right. Yeah. So y1 is your first solution. The general solution is the linear combination of the two solutions. So that's. That's the first one, and then you did it again. Yep. I'm guessing it was for C2 minus 4CO, that part. Um, but when you did that, it was YC1, or uh, Y equals C1, Y1 plus C2, Y2, mm -hmm. Y2. Mm -hmm. That one's different. That oh, one. was that last time? Yeah, last time I wrote it like this, maybe. Yeah, is that the same? Same thing. Yeah, I'm just using different Cs. I'm using big Cs. Because generally, Matthew, when you, when you see it in other sections, it's like this. Okay. Right? Remember, in, like, on your second test, we would write it like this. I was just trying to relate the fact that these arbitrary constants are actually your little Cs. So that's all. Okay. That's all. That's all. So you can just think of it like this if you want. But your, your, uh, when you did it, your C, C0 was equal to 1. Right. One was equal to zero. That's right. That's right. And then you reversed it for y two. I'm sorry. And then you reversed. Yes, it. correct. Right, because to find y one, if you do this, you would get one times y one plus zero times y two. Very good. So you would get this. Okay, I see. It. You're gonna plug that into your. Phone. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's reverse it just to make the point, because you asked and it's worth it. Because this is this is the part that. Ah! Ah, there it is. Okay. This is the part uh, that's really confusing uh, for people. My night class was super confused about this. I, mean, I think they were. Maybe a few people were. I don't know. Uh, but they did really good on the test. So I think everyone in my night class got an A on the test. Maybe there was one B or a C, maybe. But that was due because they didn't do the take home. Like they just, yeah. No <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, they didn't work together with you. Just make friends. Um, <laughs> so, 
okay, so now we can plug everything in. So we know all of these things, right? Now we know, we know all of these numbers. So we know little c0, we said that was equal to one. All right, so that's one. So one down, one. So one is progress. Um, C1 is zero. Yeah, C1 is zero. All right, C1 is equal to zero. So that one's gone. C2 is here. C2 is here. C2 is negative four. So it's going to be minus four x squared. So minus four x squared. C3 is zero. C4 is this weird fraction. Not weird, but it's just a fraction. So it's four thirds. So C3 is 0, C1, the odd ones are 0, C4 is 4 thirds, so this is 4 thirds, x to the fourth. So this is going to be cosine? No, I think, I think, no, I think that's it, because C5 is 0, and C, everything else, is, so it's just a polynomial, actually. Oh. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think, is it, is it a Hermitian polynomial, is that the right? Yeah, okay. everything else goes to 0 unless it's left over, so forces the polynomial. Oh, that's good. I'm going to read more about it later. When you said that, I'm like, really? I, I looked it up on the internet, mathworld.com. It's a great website. Uh, and it had it there. The, the DE we're working on was there. I'm like, oh my god, we're doing a cool problem. Like, you know, it's something from, you know, I didn't know. I, I didn't know. <clears throat> it's kind of interesting. Yeah, pretty cool. Okay, so that's, that's Y1. Any questions on how to find Y1? Any questions on how to find Y1? So everyone see how we did it? So you first... You first do this, and that always gives you y1. You just go through the steps. All right, now we got to find y2. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna erase this, okay? And I'll do it over here. So we can actually fit it all in here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this, separate our train of thought. So now let's find, let me write it again. C sub k plus two. I'm just gonna write it again so we have it over here. Two ck, k minus four, just copy pasting. Uh, k plus two, k plus one. So k plus two, k plus one. And then we have this, this other, the dangling parts. We have this, and this is for k equals 1, 2. So I'll finish it over here, it's just so you see it. So now we're going to find the other one. Now we're going to find uh, y2. I just wrote it over here so I could reference it, because I don't want to mess up. Okay. Why are you doing this again? Because now we have to switch them, like you said, right? Mm -hmm. I know, it's a long process, right? It's a long, this is why this is a take-home portion, right, for the tests. Um, I usually don't give take-home tests ever. It's just, this is kind of like, I mean, yeah. OK. so. C0, I have to suck it up and do it. C0 equals 0, C1 equals 1. C0 equals 0, C1 equals 1. We're flipping them now. This is going to give us Y2. Uh, yeah, the second one. Good. Y2. So now we can use this dangling part here to find C2, right? So it looks like it's going to be um, negative 4 times 0. So negative 4 times 0. So it's just going to be 0. So, so C2. Finding, so finding Y2 is always going to be easier than finding the first one? No, this is going to be actually way harder, actually. Mm -hmm. This is where people would get stuck. This is where people get stuck. This is ridiculously hard. You'll see. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. well, we already had all the stuff related to each other. We do. We do, but this you'll see what something is, something's going to happen. Something evil will happen. Ooh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Th this, this question was actually on uh, an in-class test, I think, last semester. And a bunch of people uh, gave up. So. <laughs> You'll see why. <laughs> All right. So when k is 1, it's really, it's funny when it doesn't happen to you. So when k equals 1, they did it fine. <coughs> k equals 1. So then you get c3. Right, 1 plus 2 is 3. So c3. c3. Yeah, again, usually, even if people miss a question, usually everyone gets an A or a B on this test. It's like, no matter what, I, it's just no matter what. You know, it's almost over. People try really hard. <clears throat> so k is 1, uh, so we get c1, so now we get, uh, that's a ck, that's a really ugly ck, I'm sorry, that's a c, doesn't look like a parenthesis, yeah, you thought it was, I'm sorry, here, here we go, there we go, okay, ugh, okay, and that's a parenthesis, and that's a parenthesis, okay, so it'll be, at first you thought it was though, yeah, I don't blame you, I thought it was too, so this is 2 times 1, right, because c1 is 1, right, I skip a step there, okay. c1 is 1, Okay, I got confused. So 1 minus 4 is negative 3. 1 plus 2 is 3. <laughs> 1 plus 1 is 2. Oh my god! <laughs> is it going to be 1? One? Negative 1? One? Negative 1. Yeah, I'm going I'm to I'm box that. It feels like an accomplishment. So that's negative 1. That's negative 1. 
And again, when do you stop? I don't know, right? You, you stop when you feel like you should stop. That, that's the problem with this one. Uh, things are going to get out of hand. Let's keep going. So when k is equal to 2, k is equal to 2, what do we have? Let's see. We have, aha, we have c4, right? Because 2 plus 2 is 4. And we're plugging in c2. But fortunately, c2 is 0. So the whole thing is 0. So this is 0. So this is equal to 0. So that was good. So c4 is equal to 0 in this case. All right, now we get to do it again, right? So when k is equal to 3, let's see. So k equals uh, 3. So when k is equal to 3, we get 3 plus 2. So you get 5, right? So we get c5, c5. Um, and let's see here. Negative 2 on the outside there, right? So there's 2 here. And then what was, what was, what's c3? Negative 1. Oh, that's how you get the negative. OK, so negative 1. Plug, hey! And then 3 minus 4 is negative 1. This is ridiculous, right? Yeah. So C3 was negative 1. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. We're plugging in 3, so we get 3 plus 2 is 5 mm -hmm. times 4. four. Right, right? So 20. So 2 over 20, so 1 tenth? Like, what the heck? Right? That's not even a factorial or anything, right? Like, it's not, you know, what is that? Right? I don't know. It's just a number, right? 1 tenth. 1 tenth. Your glasses are an interesting color. Like, that's cool. I know what that's about. So, right. So k equals 4. So there are these sunglasses also and regular glasses? That's really cool. That's really cool. They look like it's a cool color. So k is 4. That's going to give us c6. 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 So, oh, oh, so what's, what's C6 going to be? Zero. Zero, why? Because you've got to plug in 4 for the CK and, and C4 is 0. Beautiful, like a pro. So C4 is 0. Yep, very good. So when do we stop? I don't know. Let's just, let's just go a little further. Right, in this example here, we stopped because they were all 0. So we said, okay, we have a pattern, right? We know it's just going to be what we have. But here, we don't know. We don't know yet. So let's keep going. So when K is equal to 5, when K is equal to 5, we get C7. Right, C7. So C7. So K is 5. Oh, wow. Wow, this is going to be fun. <laughs> so it's 2 times C5, which is 1 tenth, right? And then times 1, because 5 minus 4 is 1. Cr crazy, right? Um, we're plugging in 5, right? So it's going to be 7 times 6, right? So it's 1 fifth over 42, right? So C7, so it's really 1 fifth times 1 over 42. When you divide by 42, you multiply by the reciprocal. So 5 times 42 is 210. So at this point, like, it feels really bad, right? Because we're getting like, can we start off with negative 1, right? Now we have 1 tenth. It's like, okay, it's not even a factorial. Then you get 1 over 210, you're like, what's going on, right? So at this point, we should just move on and say, what do you mean? Uh, well, I don't know what the pattern is, okay? I I'm sure there is one, but I don't know what it is. We could probably find it if we thought about it. Uh, but you could just go on forever, and you probably wouldn't find the pattern. Mm -hmm. That's why people get stuck on this problem. Uh, they, would, they go up to C15, like, ah, <laughs> time's up. <laughs> yeah, right? See, here you know when to stop, right? Because you have, but here, what's the pattern? Who knows? So what do we do? We go to the next step in the problem, right? Why? Because there is hope. We have these initial conditions, right? So there is some hope. So maybe, we'll, maybe we can find the pattern later. So let's keep going. So now, let's just go back to what we have. So we have y equals y2. Y2 is C0 plus C1x. So if you didn't do this, if you didn't know to do this, um, you probably wouldn't be able to do the problem, right? You would just, you would just keep going forever, probably, right? Unless like, you found the pattern somehow. Uh, but it's a really funky pattern. I don't know what it is. I have some ideas on what the pattern might be. Um, but I'd have to sit down like, you know, and, and work it out, probably Google something, you know, just to check something. You'll notice the, the signs aren't even alternating. Wait till you see what our, when we plug it in. It's not plus minus plus. It's like plus plus minus. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's really weird. Some random, some random 
becomes zero. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, it randomly becomes zero, right? What is that about, right? It's like plus plus minus zero. Whoa, crazy. <laughs> so, so, so C zero is zero. So that one's zero. That's the random zero. <clears throat> so that's zero. I won't write that one. And then C1 is 1. So it's going to be x. So it starts with x. Makes, it, makes, makes, the, makes me think it's a sine function, right? Because it starts with x. Um, C2 is 0, OK? Uh, C3 is <laughs> negative 1. So, it's my, see, so it makes me feel like it might be a sine function, right? Because it's x, x cubed, or something with a sine function, maybe, right? Uh, C4 is 0. All the even ones are 0, I think. Yeah, all the even ones are 0, so mm -hmm. it's just so it's just the odds. So one fifth, ah, uh, no, one tenth, one one tenth, x to the fifth, right? Because c five is one tenth, c six is zero, uh, c seven is one over two ten. So this will be. Um, it's oh, it's also plus. How strange and awkward, right? So see, it's like plus minus plus. It's plus, minus, plus, plus. I, I wonder if the next one is minus. It probably is, right? There's some weird patterns out there in math um, that aren't just plus or minus. There's other ways to alternate the signs. So that's y2. So that's y2. That's y2. So on your take-home test, just to emphasize that again, because it's due on Monday, um, it, if it says the first four non-zero terms, that's one, two, three, four. Boom, you're done. That's all you got to do, right, on that really hard one. You don't have to find the pattern on that one because it's too hard, right? Um, so don't worry about it, right? If you find it, that's awesome. No one's ever, like, written it down before. Hey, Jarrell, all right. Okay, so now we have y1, and now we have y2, so now we're going to put it together and, and finish. So uh, any questions? Any questions on this one? Uh, so far. And by the way, for those of you who are walking late, I, did, I do have a video on the internet that has this entire problem already worked out. So just see me, I'll tell you where it is. I posted it this morning. Yeah, I added it this morning at 8 a.m. It's my night class. I posted the whole lecture, like two hours and 20 minutes. It's insane. But we worked out the entire problem. So it took, it took a long time. Yeah, it, it took us two days, right? So yeah, fun times. Any, any questions so far on this one? We're not done. Now we got to finish, right? We got to we gotta, we're going to use our initial conditions and find the actual answer. Find the actual answer. Can you do that at any point? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So I just, here, I just kept going. And I was like, oh, we got a pattern. So good. Here, I'm like, ah, you know, uh, let's just, <laughs> we could have kept going, right? Yeah. Um, most people, this is, what, this is what, make, what makes this problem so hard in the homework is that you can just keep going forever and you don't know when to stop. Right. When you know to stop and you plug it back in and you're going to solve for your initial conditions, what, what is that called, if you will? Is there, is there a name for that? Uh, oh, like what we're doing we're next? Doing the indirect approach. Or we're doing the indirect approach. Mm -hmm. Then there is a direct approach. That yeah. seems to me to be kind of... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so it's, yeah, it's a little bit... So the indirect approach, basically you find these two. Yeah. And now you go back to the final answer. Now you go to the final answer. Yeah. So it's like this. So now you do this. You do y equals, I'm going to use big C's now, okay? So big C1, these are the big C's Matthew asked about. So y equals big C1, y1, plus big C2, y2. I'll leave this up here. I don't want to lose this. We need that. Okay. Okay. So now you just plug in your y1 and y2 into this, right? So y equals big C1, right? Big C1. And your y1 is over here. Right? So it's 1 minus 4x squared plus, plus 4 thirds. So you hear 1 minus 4x squared. The first time I ever did this problem, um, I also was like, oh my god, what's going on? When I saw the 1 over 210, I thought, no, I don't know what that is. And I, and I decided, like, it took me a minute. I'm like, I got really confused and I kept moving on. So if you don't know to move on, again, it's. it's and then C2 is that infinite, infinite sum way over there, this one, right, this, this thing here. And we don't know what this is, right? We don't, we don't know. So x minus x cubed, uh, that. So I'm going to write that over here. So it'll be x minus x cubed um, plus 1 over 10 x to the fifth, 1 over 10 x to the fifth, um, plus, another plus, right? Ridiculous. Plus 1 over 210 x to the seventh plus dot, dot, dot. So it's, it's this infinite infinite sum. And now we're going to find the c's. You might say, well, we don't know the pattern. Well, we don't need it, right? We can differentiate infinite sums, right? We can do that. We just differentiate term by term, right? So now we're going to use our conditions. 
So remember before, before this was the little C0, right? Before, this is what Matthew asked about, right? Before this was the little C0 and this was the little C1, right? This was the little C1 before, okay? And so we made this one one and this one zero and this one zero. Now we're just calling them big Cs. So now let's take the derivative. Right, just take the derivative. So this is a constant times a function. So the constant hangs out. The derivative of one is zero. This will be negative eight x, right, negative eight x. This will be 16 thirds x cubed. So 16 thirds x cubed. Okay, did I do that right? I think so, yeah. 16 thirds x cubed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not a lot of people here. It's a pretty small class, only like 20 people in this class. Okay, make sure you work together or like if you don't have any friends in class like after class like just hook up with some people or something because remember it's it's due Monday the take home you want to have some friends that you can check your answers with you know it's important the problems are real the last one's really tough like you don't want to like ruin your Thanksgiving you know <laughs> you won't ruin it yeah hey it's just a math problem right if you, if you, even, if you, even if you left it blank you can still get an A or a B or yeah but don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> and you get partial credit. <laughs> this, this is one. This is one. <laughs> uh, this will be minus 3x squared. <laughs> 5 tenths x to the fourth. It's one half. Yeah, good. Thanks, Gage. One half. I was thinking about turkey. 7 over 210. 130. What time is it? No, no. So 130. Sounds like a time, right? Uh, x to the sixth. Dot, dot, dot. Those three dots. What did you do there exactly? Took the derivative. You derived all of them? Mm -hmm. So derivative, 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 derivative. I'm guessing I'm just a little derivative. Yeah, no, yes, yeah, so there it is. I'll, I'll wait. Look at some water. Some water. It's a nice problem. This problem is worth doing. Whoops, 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 whoops. Any questions so far? Now we're just going to use the conditions and we're done. We got this. Oh, that's good water. It's from the earth. Okay, so, oh, wow. So why, why I was thirsty. Why of zero? Oh, really good water. Uh, so plugging it in here, right? Do you ever, you ever drink water and be like, oh, it's good water? Like, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just from the sink at my house, right? But like, I don't even, I don't even think it's filtered. Well, it is. Uh, it is, it is. One minus zero. Oh, these are all zeros, right? Why are they all zeros? Because we're plugging in zero. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 ask, 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 ask. No, it's, this is, this is, this is, yeah. Plus C2 times, what's all of this going to be because of all these zeros? Zero. 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 But isn't it one minus all this stuff? No, this one is one minus zero. Now I'm doing this one. Mm -hmm, you see it? So one minus zero. And then all of this is zero. All of this is this zero here. Okay. Doing the top one. We're plugging in zero to the top one. So one minus zero is zero. Okay. And then the, the, all of these are zero. Oh, okay, okay. We're doing the th where it says you're gonna say equals zero six. Oh yeah, we have to do six. No. Yeah, I forgot about the six. Mm -hmm. you equal to six. You I see was, it? I was picking that up at the same time as you were saying. No, no, it's good, it's good. Okay. No, ask, ask, it's your life. And then this is um, C1. Right, so C1 equals 6, right, because all of this is 0. So, so, so I'm going to put that in a box. That's, like, huge. We finally found, we finally found C1. It's like, you get it? Yeah, it's good. Are you taking PDEs next semester, partials, maybe? No. Not yet? Oh, okay. But eventually you have to, right? Maybe, or you're going to, or you don't have to. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so, so... Let's keep going. Let's find the other one. So y prime of zero. So I have to plug in zero to this one and set everything equal to zero. So it'll be c1 times zero. So all of this is zero. C1 times zero. It's cool that you're learning this too. Like I never learned this in school, ever. Like I never took a class where I learned this. It's kind of sad. Uh, okay, and then so this is zero. And this is a c2. <coughs> 1 minus 0, right? All of this is 0, right? All of this is 0. And then that's all equal to 0, right? zero. yeah, because it's from this. So C2 equals 0. So C2 equals 0. So we don't even care about what this is because it's, it's for nothing. Yes. <laughs> right? 
because C2 is zero, so we don't even need the pattern because it's all going to go away. So now that we have C2 equals zero, because see, this is C2 equals zero. So now the final answer, all of it, just plug them back in here. This is gone. All of this is going to be zero because C2 is zero. So we're just left with C1, which is six. So six, so six, parentheses, parentheses, a one minus four X squared plus four thirds X to the fourth. The last thing maybe to do is distribute the six, right? It'd be really bad like because we mess up like six times two is four. Um, so this is six uh, minus 24. 24 x squared. Eight, eight, because three, yep, eight. And that's it. That's it. That's it. Hey, no, this was the test question in my night class. I think they had this on their test. They had one like this in my uh, my other class. I think this was the last question on their test in my other class. Don't have to use the direct approach to get it right. On this one? I should look at his test again. <laughs> I didn't say that. No, no, no. <laughs> Any questions on this one? Any questions? Yeah. So it, it was kind of just coincidence that C2 canceled everything out? Yeah, it was just luck. No, it was just luck. It worked out nicely. Yeah. Are we going to be lucky on the test? Don't uh, we be more than lucky? <laughs> Just, your test, you, only, you all only have 75 minutes, so I had to like make a sacrifice. It's, well, I, it's really simple. Like, it's not even this hard on your test. I had to really tone it down. At the last minute, I almost printed it, and I thought, no, no, and I hit backspace, and I redid it. Your test is really simple. Yeah. So if C2 didn't cancel everything out, would we write... Um C1, Y1 plus C2, and then whatever we found for the pattern? Yeah. On your test, you'll always find the pattern. So on your, like, you'll always find something. On your test, it'll be E, sine, or cosine. Right? It'll be those. Right? Is that the hint? No! I forgot about the hint! Oh my god! Yeah, I will go over it now. So, any other questions on, on this one? Um, yeah, thank you. Oh. Oh, yeah, I totally forgot about the hint for the test. Yeah, I should go over that. That's really important. That's, yeah. Mm -hmm. So on your test, uh, I, I posted the review questions on WebAssign. It's like, it's like six questions of review or something, if that. I don't know. Um, and then just if you can do those, you're ready. I've never given you review questions before because, um, I don't know, I just don't do it. But this time I did um, because, I don't know, I just did. So no real reason. It's better. Right, like in Calc 3, remember in Calc 3, the review questions, I'd always, yeah, I still do that in Calc, but uh, yeah, so, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the hint then um, for, for the, for the uh, take home. So for take, uh, for take home, for number four take home, for number seven on take home. So this is, this is a really important technique uh, that really hasn't come up yet, right? I mean, it has, but not quite so hard. So say like, Say you're doing the problem and you get something like this. I'm just gonna make this up. So like, say you get k equals five. Uh, this is this might not make sense, you know. And then we have some stuff here. Plus, and then over here you have some stuff like I don't know um, c c c zero x plus uh, c one minus three c two x. Uh, plus four C three. I, I don't know if this is actually if this actually makes sense. I, I'm making it up, so this might actually might not actually make sense. I'm not really thinking about it that hard. But let's say you get something like this. This, this for all practical purposes, this will work. Let's say you get this, right? So what you have to do is you set all the stuff equal to zero, right? So you do stuff equal to zero for you know k equals five six. You know, etc. Right, just like before, and this is the tricky part here. So this, uh, this is going to remind you of linear independence. Um, before you set this equal to zero, you want to group them together. So you want to group together the constant terms. And think of this as c1 plus 4c3 plus, and think of it as c0 minus 3c2x equal to zero. Think of it like that. Right. Think of it like this. Okay. So that when you set it equal to zero, it's grouped. So you set C1 plus 4C3 equal to zero. And then here you set C0 minus 3C2 equal to zero. You see how that works? So the constant term and the coefficient of x. So you do have to group them together. Okay, if you don't do that, 
um, you won't be able to get the answer. It's impossible. Right, because would be, it means you would do it wrong if you didn't do it you this way. You can't just set all that equal to zero. You have mm -mm. to You've got to group the, you've got to group the like terms. Power of the x. Right. Yeah, you've got to group the constant term and the x term, right? The first time, I've given you a take-home test before, and the first time I ever gave the take-home test was a couple years ago. I didn't give them the hint. Oh, my God. Everyone was so confused. So ever since then, I'm like, all right, I've got to start saying something yeah, about it. Because we've always had to do that. You know what I mean? You have to always sit there. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, yeah. I don't know, you think you would have noticed it, or? I think so. That's pro. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, most people don't, so it's good. <laughs> so, like, yeah, most people don't. Most people are like, oh, you know, yeah. So, but you're right. We've always done that, right? That's what we're doing. We're equating coefficients. Yeah, you're right. In theory, in theory, I mean, you were able to recognize it using your skills. Yeah. Which one do you solve for here, uh, C1 or C3? C3. C3. Yeah, the one with the bigger subscript. That's typically what we do. So here you would get C3 equals. Uh, uh, 4C3 equals negative C1, so C3 is uh, negative 1 fourth C1, so you'd get that. And then here you'd solve for C2, right? So here you would subtract C0, so you do uh, uh, negative 3C2 equals negative C0, so C2 is one third C0, so you would, do, you would do this here, okay? So you always solve for the one with the bigger subscripts, right? And then you just go from there, right? You do the whole indirect approach. You know, C0 equals 0, C1 equals 1, et cetera, right? So, or C0 equals 1, you know, like to find Y1, you do this, and then you flip it to find Y2, right? Mm -hmm. So same as before. So um, that's all I wanted to point out, right? That's all I wanted to point out. So just make sure that um, you work together with someone, or at least you check your work. You can work alone, right? But like, you know, have someone that you can talk to during the break uh, about it, right? So, you know, get together with people after class uh, and just, you know, just because it's really tough. Like, you'll probably be able to do the other ones, but number seven, like, you might get stuck, right? You probably will. Did you try them? I got so mad, I fell asleep. Oh, uh, on number seven? Yes. It's really hard, right? I, yeah, it's really tough. That's the what? only one I need. Really? You got the other ones? Wow, wow, that's really impressive. The other ones are hard too, okay? Like it's not just number seven, like there's some pretty funky patterns, right? So um, it, it, takes, it takes a lot of effort, so, so yeah. Any questions on this stuff? We, we, we have time to do something else, so we can do something else. David, you had emailed me about a, uh, um, a series. Do you, do, you, do you know how to do that? Do you want to go over that? You want to go over it? I can, I, do you have it there? No? Yes. Yeah, you, you want to do that one? Let's do it. So let's do something else now. Let's do like a series question because you have one on your test. So let's do one. So it's number one, right, from the homework? Yeah, let's do it. That's a good, that's a good test question. It's number one from homework. Six one, right? Ready. Yeah, X to the end. So really basic one. Yeah, you might have one like this on your uh, on your test. You may be right. You do have a power series, and the question will say to uh, find the interval and radius of convergence. Right. You have one of these on your on your on your in class. Right. There's also one on the take home um, as well. So you always start these problems by using the ratio test. Right. That's the first step. So let's do it. So, because I think we've already done, as far as like the test is concerned, I think we've done all of the DEs, you know, pretty good. So limit, n goes to infinity. And since it's the ratio test, and like this is the one example we're doing, I'm going to go ahead and write the test down. So it's a sub n plus 1 over a sub n, and you have the absolute value. So you take this limit, right, always. Yeah? How do we know that it's the ratio test? You can just always use it to find the interval of convergence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the question is to find the interval and radius. You can just always start with the ratio test. Yeah. There's one in the homework that's geometric, but you know, the chances of it being geometric on your test are like zero. So, <laughs> so, so, so ratio is the way to go. Uh, all right, so let's do it. So you have a limit. n goes to infinity. So a sub n plus 1 means you replace all of the n's with uh, n plus 1's, right? So you have absolute value. Now the negative 1 to the n goes away. You can just drop it. Um, you don't need to write it because when you take the absolute value of negative 1 to the n, if it's 1, you're going to get 1. And if it's negative 1, you're going to get 1. So no matter what, it's equal to 1. So all the negative 1s go away. You can just drop them. So basically we have x. You're headed out? Yeah, I got a physics test. Oh, today? No, so. Oh, good luck. Like good luck. It's a hard life. Yeah. x to the n plus 1. Remember last time you left for the Calc 3 test and you got top score, right? Yep, yep. I got the video, so that'll help. Yep. Oh, oh yeah, from last time. Yep. yep. See ya.
tonight. Yeah, see you tonight. So replace all of the n's with n plus 1's, right? So, And then we're dividing by a sub n, so you just multiply by the reciprocal. So it'd be n over x to the n. Let me pause here. Let's just because I skipped some steps here. Right, I'm thinking of it like this. Thinking of it like this. Right, so then plug in n plus 1, you get this. And then when you divide, you flip it. You flip it. And the negatives go away because you're taking the absolute value. Any questions? Can yes? put in n for the uh, negative 1 over n. Mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. And power in n plus 1. Mm -hmm. Why did that just go away? Okay. And one to the n plus one. You can. So let me show you. I'll show you. So let's say we put it there, right? Let's just put it there, so you see. And let's say we put it here, right? Mm -hmm. What happens is, what happens is, I'll show. I'll actually show the step. I'll do it up here. What you can do is, you can bring it out of the absolute value like this, okay? Right, and then, and then you can bring this one out too. You could do this. Um, this one, you can pull it out like this if you really wanted to. You could do this. I never do this, but you could. You could pull it out, and you could pull it out. And then when you take the absolute value of this, you're just going to get 1. Because it's 1. Because if you take the absolute value of negative 1 to the n, well, negative 1 to the n is either 1 or it's negative 1. If it's 1, you get 1. And if it's negative 1, you also get 1. right? Because if it's equal to 1, you just get 1. If it's equal to negative 1, you just get 1. In any case, you get 1, right? Because this number, this, is either 1 or negative 1, right? No matter what. But you can put in anything around. You can only put in whole numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah. Right, right. So negative, oh, I see. So negative 1 to the 1 is negative 1. There's a pattern, watch. Negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. No, it's okay. Negative 1 to the 4th is 1. In general, you can actually write out, it's actually a piecewise function. Check this out. It's actually equal to 1 if n is even. This is important. And it's equal to negative 1 if n is odd. So in any case, it's equal to 1 or negative 1. And so when you take the absolute value, you just get 1. And this is actually equal to extra life knowledge because you asked, and now I'm really interested, cosine n pi. Oh, random. <laughs> right? No, yeah. Count 2, right? <laughs> It's always on their test. Like, cosine n pi over n, go. Like, what? What's cosine n pi? Ah! Yeah, it's this negative 1 to the n. So you can work it out. So, OK, so these go away. So so now um, there's some other trickery involved in this problem. All right? No, really good question, Matthew. I'm so glad you asked. Because I never go over this, right? I always just say, oh, it's 1. But like, no one ever asks. That's good. Like, it's good to like see that extra step. I've never shown this step before, ever, in a classroom. First time ever, mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. Never done it. Good, Matthew. Yeah? Does that mean zero is even? Zero is an even number, yeah. Yeah, even means, so a number is even, since you asked, uh, uh, Gilbert, no, not Gilbert, g g since you asked, uh, <laughs> x is even if x equals 2n, two, two where n is an integer. So zero is equal to 2 times zero. So zero is even, because zero is an integer. Uh, four is equal to 2 times 2, so four is even. Um, 6 is equal to 2 times 3. 3 is an integer, so 6 is even. So odd numbers are 2n plus 1. Even numbers can be written in the form of, of 2n. Yeah, 0 is even. Yeah, <laughs> good. OK, so now there's some more trickery. So I'm, I'm going to do it up here. So this can simplify. If you have x to the n plus 1 over x to the n, you can write this as x to the n times x over x to the n, right, using skill. Right, properties of exponents. Right? It's been a long time since you've done this. I'm glad we were doing this. I'm glad you emailed me, David, and gave me the idea to do it. I mean, because this is on your test. And then these cancel. Wow! Right, so you just get x, right? Yeah, this has been like months, right? So this is equal to limit n goes to infinity. Whoo! So, so all of this is just going to be x, right? Because the x to the n's cancel. So we get x. Then we have this n. And then on the bottom, we have this n plus 1. n plus 1. You know there's a party today on campus? Anyone going to the honors party? Anyone? Anyone in honors? No one's in honors? They have turkey, I think. Yeah, no one's? Kassila, you're not in honors? I thought you were in honors. I am. Oh, are you going to the party? No. Oh. <laughs> you're not? <laughs> I brought food. I brought, like, drinks. So 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They told me I can go if I bring something. So I stopped and got some stuff today. So, yeah. Anyways, okay. So this limit here, I just brought like high C's and Capri Suns. This is one, right? Because the exponents match, right? Right, we're taking a limit as n goes to infinity, so we just get the absolute value of x. Because this whole limit, this is 1. Right, because it's, it's like, the, it's the ratio of the coefficients, right? Like, think about this. Go back to, like, basics. If you have 3n squared plus 1 over 5n squared plus 2, whenever the degrees are the same, the limit is the ratio of the leading coefficients. It's 3 fifths. Remember that? So it's just that number over that number. So here, it's just 1 over 1, which is 1. So it's 1 over 1, which is 1. So you just get 1 times x. 1 times x. If you like, you can actually pull the absolute value out of the limit, too. Uh, you could do that as well. Any questions on this? Anyone, anyone not get this? So again, it's just the ratio of the coefficients. Everyone see it? Everyone see it? Make sense? Make sense? Hey, Spencer! Oh, oh. hello. <laughs> Everyone okay with that step? Okay, we want this to converge. For it to converge, it's been a long time since we've done this. Do you remember what we do? We set it less than a number. Do you remember less than, do you remember? Less than one. No, it's not the P series. It might turn into one. We'll see. We'll see. It's less than one. Yeah, this is the ratio test. So the ratio test says when you take this limit and you get L, like this is equal to L, if it's less than one, it converges. Equal to one, no info. Greater than one diverges. So we want it to converge. So we want it to be less than one. So we put this here because we want convergence. Okay. So you always do that. Okay. You always make it less than one. Okay. So now we have to solve this inequality. So we have the absolute value of x less than one. Right. Less than one. And then we drop the absolute value. I don't know. It's been a while since we've done this. So you have a one here, and then here. What goes here? Do you remember? Do you remember what goes here? Negative one, very good, Davin. Is it Davin or Davin? Dave, I'm so sorry, okay? I should know, like, I've known you for almost a year. Um, all right, it's kinda, it's all right. We're not done, we're not done. So we're looking for the interval of convergence. Now we have to check the endpoints, right? So now you gotta take these numbers and you have to plug them into the original series, this one here, to figure out whether it converges or diverges there. So let's do it, let's check negative one, so check so check negative one. So check negative one. Let's check negative one. So to check negative one, we just take negative one and we plug it into this, right? This is actually going to be a pretty easy one, I think. So it'll be infinite sum. n equals one to infinity, okay? One to infinity. <coughs> negative one to the n. So we have negative one to the n. And then this is also negative one, so it's negative one to the n again, right? This is a good test question, just so you know. Like, I know for a fact that this has been on test before, like this specific problem. I just don't know if it's on your test. I don't remember. Over n. I thought those were playing cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the gambler. Like, I don't know. Like, what are those? Uh, uh, I have a test in psychology. Oh, oh psychology. Mm. Oh, oh. That's right. Oh, almost. Almost. So when you multiply these, you add the exponents, right? So you get negative 1 to the 2n. Ah, uh, I see. Someone had a question earlier about even and odd. It's always 1. It's always 1 because 2n is even. See? Uh, good that you asked. Because uh, 2n is even, so negative 1 to an even power is 1. So this is just 1 over n. So Josh, you were 50% correct. Well, almost. 80, maybe 80%, depending on who you talk to. It's 1 over n, so it is a p-series, but what does it do in this case? Does it converge or diverge? Diverges. Diverges. It totally dies. It diverges. Oh, you said, I thought you said converges. Oh, no, no. no. Did, you, did you say diverges? Oh, you did? Oh, sorry. Okay, so diverges. I'll here watch it. <laughs> diverges by the p-test. Since, you have to explain why, right? So since p equals 1, which is less than or equal to 1, right? So you do, you do have to uh, justify that. If you're feeling like overwhelmed by all these series tests, don't. Just don't, right? <laughs> Just don't worry about it, right? It's not that big of a deal. I think it's only like 20 points on your test. And like if you, if you take your in-class and your take-home, it's like 320 points or something ridiculous. So, yeah. Um, why did you plug in negative 1 for x? Ah, because we have to check the endpoints. 
So then that means you're going to do it again for one. Absolutely. So then why can you say it diverges if you just check them? Well, it diverges at negative one. This, this series diverges, right? So that means this diverges when we plug in it. So it, that means we're, it, we're just, yeah, so it diverges there. At that so then now determine whether you put the parentheses or the bracket. Right, very good. So because it diverges, uh, will we use a parentheses or a bracket in this case? What do you think? Um, parentheses. Parentheses, very good. So I'll start writing the answer up here. Very good, 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 good. So parentheses, yeah, good, excellent. Parentheses. Yeah, a lot of times people feel overwhelmed by this. I don't blame you, right? When I, it's been a while since I taught Calc 2, but when I teach it, I spend a whole month on this. We spent a day doing series tests, I mean, or, or two days, like it's, yeah. But it's all right. You got this. Let's check uh, one. So check one. So check one. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry, say it again. Uh, okay, so when you multiply these, you add the exponents, right? So n plus n is 2n. And this is equal to 1. You can't do negative 1 times negative 1 because they have exponents. Yeah, so here. So, so two ways to do it. Two. Yeah, check this out. Two ways to do it. Method 1, it's equal to 1. Why? Because that's even. Method 2, let's show the work. How do you show the work? Superpowers. Watch this. Right? 2 times n is 2 times n. Isn't that cool? So negative 1 squared is 1. <laughs> and 1 to the n is 1. Yeah, it's good. It's good to convince yourself. It's like, well, you just, if you just put the rule like, like big A to the n times big A to the n, it's going to be right. big A to the n plus m. Right. That's the, that's, that's the external rule when you're multiplying. <coughs> right. Right, so that's what we're using here, exactly. You can't, you can't multiply the, the x the, the bases themselves. Oh, that's what you wanted to do, right. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, uh-huh, I see, I see, I see, yeah. Why does uh, 1 to the n equal 1? Because we don't have the absolute value. 1 to the n is 1, is 1 to the n. Okay, so 1 is 1. 1 squared is 1 times 1. 1 cubed is 1 times 1 times 1. No, 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 it's important to ask. No, so 1 to the n, you have n copies of 1, so you get 1. No, it's important. Like, no one ever asks. Like, it matters, right? Like, why is the sky blue? No, 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 not really. That's different. No, I don't, no, no, I don't know if I did. That, that's different. That's, that's good. Yeah. No, actually, I don't know why the sky is blue. Uh, all right, so let's keep going. I should know. It's, it's the uh, ion sphere. So when light hits the ion sphere, the ions, that part of the atmosphere sphere change the light blue. Interesting. Good. Excellent. I know a bunch of things. Yeah, that's good. Good stuff. All right, so checking one. <laughs> Someone knows. There's a lot of people in this room, a lot of intelligence. Uh, so you plug in one here. So you get one to the n. Ah, you get one to the n, which is what? But I'll write it. I'll write it. I'll write it. So plug in one. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So one to the n is one. So, so it goes away. So we get infinite sum. n equals one to infinity negative 1 to the n over n. So now we have to figure out what's up with this, right? What is it? Ah, oh, you're right. This time and last time too, I'm sure. <laughs> Sorry, I had to like. So yeah, it's a convergent alternating series. Very good. Um, so we just have to go through the motions, right? So when you're using the alternating series test, you have to determine what your a sub n is. It's always the non-alternating part, right? So, so it's just 1 over n. Right. And then you just go through the motions. So the first step is to, do you remember what it was the first step in the AST? Take the, 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 the limit. Yeah, the limit. Take the limit. And just, I'll believe you just say it's zero, if it is. <laughs> you don't have to show it. You know, it's one over something big, so it's something small, or gets close to something small. And then the second step was to say it's something. Do you remember that word? Non-increasing, that uncomfortable word. Uh, Patrick, he's not here, but he seems really good at it. He's like, oh yeah, like he, he really liked that word. This, used, this caused me so much pain. Uh, Non-increasing means decreasing or staying, or staying the same. And that's difficult, right? It's a difficult concept. Um, so both of these conditions are satisfied, so it converges by the alternating series test, which we abbreviated AST, so by the AST. By the AST. So, convergence by the AST. 
So at one, it converges. So what does that mean we use at one? A parenthesis or a bracket? Bracket. bracket. Very good. So we have our interval of convergence. We have our interval <coughs> of convergence. There is our interval. Beautiful stuff. The last thing to do is find the radius, which is really, really easy. Um, I like to draw a picture and overcomplicate things for the radius because it's more fun. So here's the picture. The center of the power series is zero because it's x minus zero, right? There's, there's, no, there's no c there. So here's the center of the power series. And here are the endpoints of the interval, one and negative one. The radius is the distance from the center to any of the endpoints. So the distance from the center to any endpoint is equal to one. And that is the radius. That's it. So that's it. Any questions on that one? Think you can do it again? On one day, I know. You have a week though, that's good, right, I guess. Do all the homework and practice problems. Hmm? Do all the homework and practice problems. Yeah, if you do the practice problems, you are more than ready. Do all the homework. Yeah, if you do all of the homework. <laughs> yeah, and the hardest thing is gonna be the take home test, because the in-class test is really easy. If you do the review questions, you are more than ready for the in-class test. Like, you will rock the in-class test, trust me. You'll be like, what? Oh, he said it was gonna be easy, but not this, I'm not, I mean, still to study, I study, like, oh, he said it was gonna be easy, like, study. But, like, I could not make it any easier. Like, it's really straightforward. I think you only have three DEs on your test. That's it's, it. It's easier than the other tests when you study. Yeah, it's easier than my night classes test, too. So, they had, they had a harder test, so. Any questions on this stuff? Any questions? We have like 10 minutes. I don't think we have time for another DE, but we can talk about stuff. Yeah. I'm just trying to wrap my head around it. Around all of it? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, negative <laughs> one to the n over n equals what? one over n. This? You go over this? that, and that, how does that equal? Oh, the, how do I get this? Yeah. Ah, okay, this is a different thought process. So basically, this is an alternating series. So we're using the alternating series test. And so when we use that test, our a sub n is always the non-alternating part. Always. You just memorize it. It's the non-alternating non part. I have a hard time. What is the non-alternating part of that? Ah, uh, 1 over n. You can write it like this. Check it out. So it's the non-alternating part. You have to think of it that way to get oh, so it. it. Yeah, you do have to split it mentally to get it. Yes, that's why I split it. Yes. It yeah, so you should write it down. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally worth it. Mm -hmm. Totally worth it. Any, any other questions about the test or uh, anything at all? Nothing? Nothing? No questions? General math questions. Huh? General math questions. General, general math questions. Life? No, I'm kidding. Not, not life. <laughs> Thanksgiving? <laughs> So no one's going to the party? Gotta say, you might go. Oh, you want to go home? What party? Right. No, yeah, I'm not going. Yeah, there's, a, there's an honors party, but you have to bring food. When, when is it? I don't know. Do you know when it is? Uh, no. No, I'm going after my next class. 